Good morning, everyone. This third round of public hearings is being held as part of the national inquiry being conducted by the Commission on the Impact of Climate Change on the Human Rights of the Filipino People. This proceeding stems from a petition filed before the Commission, docketed as CHR case number CHR-NI-2016-0001. The solemnity of the public hearing shall be upheld at all times. Respect should be accorded to everyone present. A clapping of hands and unnecessary remarks shall not be allowed and may be regarded as direct contempt of the inquiry panel. Cell phones should be turned off or put on silent mode while proceedings are going on. All rise. The commissioners present for today's inquiry proceedings are Honorable Commissioner Lea C. Tanodra Armamento, Honorable Commissioner Gwendolyn L. L. Pimentel Gana, Inquiry Panel Chairman of the NICC, Honorable Commissioner Roberto Eugenio T. Cadiz, Honorable Commissioner Karen S. Gomez Dumpit, and Chair of the Commission on the Human, on Human Rights, Honorable Jose Luis Martin C. Gascon. Please remain standing for the National Anthem and the Ecumenical Prayer. Bayang magiling, pero sa silangan, alab ng puso sa dibdib mo'y buhay. Lupang giniran, dulan ka ng magiging sa manunupig. Di ka pasisigil sa dagat at bundok, sa simoy at sa langit mong babay. May binagang tula at awit sa pagnayang minamahal. Ang kislap ng matawag mo'y tagumpay na nagpiniling. Ang bituin ng araw na kailan pang may di magdidinin. Lupa ng araw na walang ipagsinta. Everyone may now be seated. Good 
the panel is now in session. Uh, it continues to be assisted by Dr. Pedro Walpo. Uh, councils, uh, are you ready to present your witnesses? Uh, may you please enter first your formal appearances? Good morning, Your Honors. Respectfully appearing, Hasmina D. Paudak for the petitioners. Good morning, Your Honors. Respectfully appearing, Griselda Mayanda for the petitioners. We are ready, Your Honors. Please call in your first witness. Uh, our witnesses uh, for the day are uh, members of the Ifugao tribe. And we would like to call Mr. Buukan Hangdaan, Ms. Dalia Naliu, and Mr. William Mamanglo. Please swear in the three witnesses. Three or four? Three witnesses. Three witnesses. May we ask our uh, people to provide three chairs? for the witnesses. Ako po si uh, William Mamanglo. Ako ay isang uh, tubong Ifugao at kasalukuyang nakatira sa bayan ng Banawi, Ifugao. Uh, ako si ano, Uukan ng daan um, Banga ang Banawi, Ifugao. Ako naman po si Daria Naliu, nakatira po ako sa Banawi, Ifugao. May I proceed, Your Honor? Please proceed. <clears throat> Mr. Buka Nardaan is a indigenous uh, farmer uh, of the Ifugao tribe residing in the Banawi Rice Terraces. Uh, Ms. Daliu Naliu is a uh, culture bearer and uh, Mr. William Mamanglo is the project development coordinator of the Provincial Planning and Development Office, specifically the Ifugao Cultural Heritage Office. And we are offering their testimonies, your honors, so that they can share how higher temperatures, intensifying weather events, and other climate impacts threaten the 2,000-year-old Ifugao rice terraces, including the communities depending on them. And um, before we proceed with the presentation, Your Honours, may I be allowed to uh, have certain documents identified? Uh, please go ahead. Magandang umaga po ulit. Magandang umaga. Um, I would also like to make this manifestation, Your Honours, that Mr. Buukan Hangdaan, while he can respond to certain preliminary questions, feels comfortable making his presentation in Ifugao, which will be translated by William Mamanga. Uh, ginoong buukan hangdaan, pwede niyo bang suriin ang dokumentong ito at uh, pakitingnan kung ito ba ay nakikilala ninyo? Hmm. Ito ang ano? Ano Oh, oh, dito ang <coughs> lahat namin. Oh, oh. <coughs> Nakikilala niyo pa? Oo, oh, oh. nakikilala pa niyo. Uh, sa pangalawang pahina po nito, ay meron po pirma. Uh, oh, ito po. Pirma po dito. Now, this first document, Your Honor, consisting of two pages, has been previously marked as quintuple O. Salamat. Uh, ginang daliw na liw, maaari mo bang suriin itong tatlong ayon ng dokumento? Kung naalala mo ba? Opo. Sa pangatlong pahinang ito, meron pong pirma. Pakitingnan po ang pirmang ito. Sa akin po ito. This document, Your Honor, entitled Salaysay ni Binibining Daliw na liw, has been previously marked as quintuple P. 
um, Ginong William Mamangno, pakitingnan po itong um, isang dokumento na nagsasabing statement of William Mamangno. Pakisuri po at pakisabi kung naalala niyo po. Opo, naalala ko to. Ito ay uh, sarili kong ginawa. Salamat. At ito pong isa ding dokumento, isang pahina, Curriculum Vitae. Mahali mo bang suriin po yan? Opo. Ako rin po ang gumawa dito at uh, aking ipinasa. At uh, panghuli, uh, merong isang PowerPoint presentation, dalawang po tatlong pahina. Paki, uh, suri po. Mabuti. At pakisabi kung naalala niyo po yan. Oo, oh, naalala ko to. Ako rin po ang gumawa nito. Presentation. Now, these three documents, Your Honors, which have been identified, have been previously marked. The curriculum vitae has been marked as quintuple R. The statement of William Mamanglo has been previously marked as quintuple Q. And the PowerPoint presentation of William Mamanglo has been previously marked as quintuple S. Uh, just for the record, uh, Attorney Esguera, would you confirm the pre-markings of the document cited by the councils? All right, please proceed. Um, the first presenter honor would be Mr. Bukan Hangdaan, and uh, he will speak in Ifugao. And this uh, brief presentation will be translated by Mr. William Mamanga. <coughs> Oh, ako ay si Tuo Kanangdaan. Um, Pukarin sa ano, Bangaan, Banawi. Oh, yung taon ko, 70 years ako ngayon. Uh, Nandun ko lumaki sa ano, Bangaan, yung isang farmers. Um, yeah, it's a good one. Uh, he's in Mang of Nala. Yeah, I want you to, uh, oh, I'm Palmer Tech here in his call. They will be in Tamun to tune up on you, I mean, Tamun Nampayo. Okay, na. Okay. Uh, I am, uh, Bukukan Hangdaan, nakatira po ako sa Bangaan, Ifugao. Ako po isang katutubong Ifugao. Noong uh, bata, pa, bata ako, hindi ako nakapag-aral. Kaya magsasaka sa uh, aming palayan, sa rice terraces ng Bangaan, ang itinuro sa akin ng aking mga uh, parents at sa aking mga ninuno. Ito yung pugulaya. Ya Tiwa hi minang kitian na in Chakrachi a UNESCO an oha an World Heritage Site sa Bangaan. Ang pinagtratrabuhuan ko pong palayan ngayon ay kasalukuyang isang World Heritage Site as declared by the UNESCO. Oh, hindi minimum tanuman hinan kung tanuman hi pake hi tantanumihan ki tinawun ang inkiana hi hinumari ng pake hi lowland na hi nakatan at uwa mo ki pake hi ng problema ito ang pake mo ng lowland ki kami tanum ya tsaka ki haray peng na yung tumupo ng hano ay yung diferensya Inaca mi ye different sate ah wa ti nan kin pakis tin da beye ke chu e in ke na hi ah nan pakit wa ti inapak na ta ho ju ang pangunahing uh, tinatanim namin sa aming palayan ay ang aming traditional na palay na tinatawag naming tinawon pero ngayon may pagbabago sa aping mga tinatanim kasi inadapt na nin namin ang mga palay sa mga lowland na aming kapitbahay tulad ng Isabela. Uh, ang pagkakaiba po nito ay maganda rin yung mga lowland, lowland variety na rice.
Pero sa aking tingin, sa haba ng panahon na pagtatanim ko ng mga lowland rice, na ikumpara ko at mas maganda pa rin yung aming tinawan rice kasi maliban sa mahaba yung palay, ay ito rin ay mas malaki kaysa palay sa lowland. O oh, yan yun. <coughs> at yan niya, ay paphod ni Hanki Yawa Kiniki, mumpia ay yan tamang tanong. Ang maduwan niya, maite, pinahot niya, ng kaku yan siya, maphod ng kristyano tate, hiting na po niya kaya, o nga ang kestus ng, ah, ng ugali ang mumpia eh. Yan ang, ah, eto ang maite at uwan mo. Noon, bago kami magtanim sa aming palayan, may mga ritual kaming sinusunod, alinsunod sa mga pa sinabi sa aking sa amin ng ma, aming mga ninuno. Nagbabaki kami ito isang ritual para sa pasasalamat sa Panginoon ng uh, palay. Ngunit ngayon, pumasok na ang uh, Kristiyanismo, ito na ay unti-unting nawawala at minsay hindi pa namin pinapraktis ang mga ritual na ito. Kasi maliban sa wala nang gagawa sa mga itong mga ritual, ay itong mga ritual ay uh, medyo mahal din, costly yung paggawa ng ritual. Oh, yan yeah, <clears throat> man. Uh, yeah, mo, ya mama ma it man ukeli. Ya and we atom yung ma itanom ni nang pakit uwan. Ya no ya muntelus ami man keke ami na yi laptop mi ta ye lumang nang pake. Ya makot an malumang nang pake. Milutun nang min nang holo ya nang keke ami na. Uh, ang ginagawa din naming uh, fertilizer sa aming mga itinatanim ay yung sarili mismong stock ng mga palay. Uh, linuluglob namin sa aming mga palayan at ito yung mga nagsisilbing uh, aming fertilizer para maganda ang ani. O, oh, tiyanan, at uwan mo, yeah, uh, mapot hiti yan, uh, at ang may wajan na mapainan kuti, Ya, cakap ni anda di mana iya, untuk pang ami, mungkin cakap bapa i, amat uang moya, ni tete ang pemula cipu lahi pun kestu simpi pere, teh on dia yang simpi pere, dia nanti ya pemula ya macam mana anamu, tici yang wajah munuk upu, amat uang yang kita munuk upu hinan payo an manmanu. Ah. Noon talagang pinapalagahan namin at rinatrabaho namin ang aming mga palayan. Kami ang sariling nagre-repair kung may uh, siraman. Pero ngayon, dahil na rin sa ibang pangangailangan, kailangan din namin minsan lumuwas sa aming lugar para magtrabaho. Sapagkat ako'y may siyam na anak, eh, iniisip ko rin na kailangan silang pag-aralin. Kaya kung mag... Uh, kaya minsan iniiwanan ko rin ang aking palayan para magtrabaho para may pera na pantustos sa pag-aaral ng aking mga anak. O oh, yeah, yeah. <coughs> nan education ya kacang mi at uwan ni ipikeh nan ngaya uh, tsaka kita mo siya um, o oh, hata mo yan ay tsaka magbibayan nan education. Ang isa rin problema hmm. namin ay uh, itong irigasyon. Noon hmm. may uh, uh, may uh, uh, isang community na ginagawa namin, ito yung tinatawag nating bayanihan, but chang sa amin, nagtutulungan kami para i-repair yung mga irrigation. Ngayon, kahit na nagtatawag ka ng mga tao sa community, marami silang ginagawa at ang mga kabataan ngayon ay hindi na interesado sa mga ganitong bagay. At uh, yan ang isang itmusin ugali ang makot. Yeah. So, yun na lang po ang salaysay ni Mr. Buukan. Excuse me. Wali itong papangat. At uwan mo, sa barit at uwan niya, habyali at uwan, na pwede uwan tinukari tanti niya, na pwede na umwake yung tiyanan na ang pulan, yung wake yung mauko, 
Yeke pun hap na ami. Oh ya. Hetu yang ju nama kun inklus nan awa anuced. Yen mun nakcinan education ramap nu yen payo ramap nu nan kini makai nan letang yun e mengakcimu yen mapak pak imunan payo yen tuan hinan. Isaling pagbabago sa ngayon ay noon nalalaman namin ang ang ulan at may sarili kami ng kalendaryo kung kailan kami magtatanim kasi alam namin na maganda ang panahon konte lang ang ulan so nagtatanim kami sa buwan na yan na alam namin na maganda para itanim i transplant namin pero ngayon ang uh, problema is may biglang pagpabago sa panahon. Hindi mo na ma hindi mo na matantya kung kailan talaga uulan sa amin. Na pag uulan pa dire-diretso at minsan ay malalakas to the point na hindi na kaya ng aming palayan ang volume na tubig na bumabagsak sa aming palayan. Oh yeah. <coughs> at uwan di talaga na buliwan tay hangkiya Uday kami munhumipot ang hinan mga alas yung kawin kaya na marimbya mita marit namin munhakit hinan op-op at uwan kaya mga alas unsi munhait ng op-op. Isa pang pagbabago ay noon mga alas singko magumpisa na kami magtrabaho sa aming palayan. Papasok kami hanggang sa gabi. Uh, yung pahinga lang namin is magnanganga kami ng mama uh, o magpapahinga uh, eh okay pag umuwi kami okay yung katawan namin ngayon pumasok kami ng alas 7 kailangan alas 11 aalis na kami sa aming uh, palayan kasi iba na ang uh, ang uh, araw kasi masakit na sa aming balat mm. <laughs> oh yun po Salamat po, Ginong Bukan. Pwede na po natin tawagin si Dalia. Magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Ako naman po si Dalia Naliu, 24 years old at kasalukuyan po akong nagtratrabaho sa cultural heritage ng probinsya sa amin. Ako po ay pangatlo sa aming pito na magkakapatid at ang magulang ko po ay parehong magsasaka. Nandito po ako upang isalaysay ang bilang isang kabataan ang mga nabago sa aming kultura. Una po ay nung maranasan namin ang epekto ng El Nino way back 2004, I think, kung saan dumadayo po kami sa kabilang sitio para magigib ng tubig dahil yung reserva po sa amin ay tuyo na. Doon po kasi sa kabilang sitio may creek po doon na hindi po natutuyo. Pangalawa po sa aming kabuhayan. Pagsasaka po kasi ang pangunahing inkinabubuhay namin kung kaya't sa kakulangan ng tubig na aapektuhan po ang aming ani. Kumpara po sa ngayon na lagi na pong umuulan at dahil po sa sobrang ulan, na-flood po yung aming palayan na Minsan nagkakos po ng landslide sa mga palayan sa amin. Dahil po sa ganitong sitwasyon, kung saan hindi po kumakasya sa pang-araw-araw naming kinabubuhay, lalo na nga po at nag-aaral po kaming magkakapatid, kaya at nag po ang aking ama na magtrabaho po sa Baguio. Kahit po ayaw niya, ay kailangan po niyang gawin yun upang masuportahan kami at mapag-aral. Yung nanay ko naman po, ume-extra po siya sa 
pagtratrabaho sa gilid ng kalsada. Nag-apply po siya sa DPWH. Yung contractual lang po. Tapos yun po. Sa, kapag bumabagyo po sa amin, sobra po yung... Ay, hindi po pala uso yung evacuation center dahil yung mga tao po dun sa amin halos magkakakilala tapos nagtutulungan po sila. Kaya kung ang bahay nyo ay medyo delikado pag bumabagyo, ay pwede kang i-accommodate ng kapitbahay mo nang wala pong bayad. Tapos kapag bumabagyo po, nung time po kasi na karaniwang bumabagyo sa amin is nag-aaral pa po kasi ako nun sa bagyo. Kaya sobrang pag-aalala po yung nararamdaman ko, lalo na po, lalo na po sa amin na prone po siya sa landslide. Tapos yung tatay ko po kasi noon ay isang minero. Yun po. Tapos, sa amin naman pong kapaligiran, kung noon po may nakukuha po kaming mga bungang kahoy, mga halamang gamot, mga gulay din po na nauulam na kusang tumutubo sa paligid, ngayon po ay unti-unti na po itong nawawala dahil po sa... Dahil po siguro sa klase ng klima ngayon na pabago-bago. Tapos yung sa paggamit po ng mga insecticide, pesticide sa pagpatay ng mga damo. Panghuli po sa aming kultura. Sa amin po kasi, gaya po ng nabanggit ni Lolo Buukan, yung ritual namin na tinatawag na baki. Yung mga nagpe-perform po ng baki ay tinatawag naming mumbaki. Yung it, isa ipo itong rice ritual, na gaya po ng sinabi ni Lolo Buukan, ginagawa po ito bago magtanim, tapos pagkatapos ng ani, para hindi po kakainin ng peste o mga daga ang iyong mga palay. Sa ngayon po kasi, hindi na po siya masyadong na-practice dahil nga po sa... Dahil po sa kadahilan ng lumaganap na po yung Christianity. Tapos yung nakikita ko din pong isang contributing factor is yung, yung mainit na panahon ngayon. Kapag ginagawa po kasi ang baki, kailang may ano po sa kaugalian na dapat hindi ka maligo ng isang buwan. Pero syempre sa ngayon po kasi, mainit na po yung, yung weather, hindi po talaga naka, minsan hindi nila kinakaya. Yan po. Tapos karamihan po kasi sa mga kaedad ko sa amin ay ayaw ng, gusto nang manirahan dito sa syudad. Dahil daw po, hindi daw po boring, ganun. Kaya sa kagustuhan ko pong malaman ng aming tradisyon at kultura, hmm, kaya't minahal ko po ang aking trabaho kung saan nagkakandak po kami ng mga programs or training. Isa po dito ay yung stonewalling na ang na ang prina, ang mga beneficiary po dito ay yung mga kabataan. Tinuturoan po namin sila kung paano mag-grip wrap, lalo na po sa mga rice terraces na kabilang sa cultural world heritage para ma magawa po ito ulit. Isa din po ay yung training sa handicraft, tapos yung pag-aaral po ng aming native dance and song. Meron din po kaming research na tinatawag naming flora and fauna kung saan minomonitor po namin every three years yung mga useful plants and animals sa, na nakikita sa mga palayan kung nag -e exist pa po ba ang mga ito at kung bakit po nadidiminish na. Yun lang po. Salamat, Dalia. Uh, Ginoong William Mamanglo. Magandang umaga po sa ating uh, lahat, lalo, lalo na sa chairperson at mga commissioners ng Commission on uh, Human Rights. I am not an avid fan of uh, the President Rodrigo Rual Duterte. 
but uh, sometimes I admire him. One of the thing I, I, I admire from him when is when he closed Boracay purposely for rehabilitation as not to worsen the existing problem in Boracay. On his sauna, I heard him and he made a very strong critique to the Commission on Human Rights by saying, your concern is human rights. Mine is human lives. But today, uh, when I am here and I see that the Commission on Human Rights took cognizance of this petition, it changed my mind. Nasabi ko sa sarili ko, may ginagawa naman pala ang Commission of Human Rights. So nararamdaman ko na ganito ka pala ka-importante ang Commission of Human Rights. And I said to myself, dapat ganito ang sinabi ni President Duterte. Your concern is saving lives. Mine is taking lives. Yung last po na portion, paki-delete lang po yon Baka aabot kay Presidente Duterte. Pupuntahan kami sa aming lugar sa Ifugao. So, uh, maraming salamat po. Kumukuha lang po ako ng buwelo. Kasi, medyo ninenervyos. Pakibalik lang po sa, ano. So, uh, again, I am uh, William and uh, I'm here to present the case of our rice terraces, particularly on uh, the effect of uh, climate change. Next slide, please. So, our province, the province of Ifugao, is located in the Cordillera region on the northern Luzon of uh, the country. Uh, I would like to inform everybody that our place, the province of Ifugao, is not a part of Baguio as misconception of many. If you travel from Banawe or from Ifugao to Baguio, it will take you eight hours by bus and six hours by van. So malayo po ang agwat namin doon. So hindi po kami part ng Baguio, although we belong to one region we call the Cordillera Administrative Region. Next, please. So uh, because before we became a full-fledged province in 1966, we were part of the old mountain province. But when President uh, uh, Aquino became president and as a gift to the Igorot people, he issued Executive Order 220 creating the Cordillera Administrative Region. And uh, nung nabuo yon, we became part of that region. Next, please. So, uh, we have 11 municipalities composed of 175 barangays, and uh, we are a uh, third-class province with a total population as of two, 2015 of more than 202,000 uh, people. Next, please. So, uh, we are a forest land because 90% of it is composed of forest land only 10% is alienable and disposable, meaning ito yung ginagamit namin for our houses and for some other uh, commercial or business purposes. Kasi mostly sa amin talaga is we are a forest land. Next, please. So, uh, on, 19, on 1995, uh, the UNESCO uh, declared our uh, rice terraces, actually two in Banawe, and uh, with the inscription, a cultural uh, living cultural land is Cape. Next, please. But unfortunately, on uh, 2001, upon an inscription as a World Heritage Sites, on, uh, on that date, we were included in the list of the 100 most endangered sites in the World Monument Watch, and UNESCO warned us that we, do, we should do something, otherwise we will be removed from the uh, list. So, our government, our national government, and all the stakeholders have done something. And in 2012, we were removed and back again as a World Heritage Site. Next, please. So uh, we are also a cultural heritage site. We are practicing every culture with important cultural activities like the uh, uh, Punuk, which was declared 
as a uh, representative list of the intangible cultural heritage of humanity in the UNESCO. It is an important part of our ritual, a post-harvest ritual. The, in the last pundok of this year, our uh, new secretary, Bernadette Tromunupuyat, attended that, uh, what do you call this, event. And we are also an in geographically important agricultural heritage system according to the Food and Agriculture Organization, the only GS site in the country. Next, please. So uh, we are uh, divided according to tribe. We have four major tribes, Ayangan, Tuwali, Kalanguya, and the Kalinga. On our, ma, I am a Tuwali, he is also a Tuwali and uh, some parts of Ayangan. So they belong to two tribes while I belong only to one tribe. Next, please. On our economy, our uh, main source of livelihood is actually agriculture working on our uh, fields in the rice terraces. Secondary na yung mga, yung mga piggery and then uh, yung mga other uh, livestock uh, livelihood. Next, please. In terms of uh, tourism, we have a lot of uh, tourism to offer in the province of Ifugao, but the most visited and uh, most na pinupuntahan talaga sa Ifugao is our rice, uh, is our rice terraces, secondary na yung mga others. Next, please. So on major investment, we invest on eco-cultural and agricultural tourism. Uh, Unfortunately, yung uh, rice terraces to, to namin while they exist and while they are wonderful, we are experiencing so much uh, problem in maintaining and in uh, keeping with our rice terraces. So our uh, number one problem is actually on disturbed ecosystem. So ngayon nasisira na po yung ecosystem ng aming uh, uh, sa lugar sa aming mga rice terraces. Ang number one na problema is ito yung modernization at globalization. As our people in Ifugao assimilate modern ways of life, they improve their life, they earn money. Ito na rin yung nagbibigay ng development na unregulated na mga development. We have laws and ordinances on land or zoning ordinances, but unfortunately, there is no political will in our province and in our municipality to implement these things. They just allow people to just build their houses wherever they want. While it is declared as a World Heritage Site, lagi na lang ganun na they just build where they intend to build. Basta sasabihin lang sa amin yung lupa. So that's why nadi-disturb yung ecosystem namin because uh, kahit kahit saan na linalagay. So, nagda-divert-divert ng mga canals, hindi na natural yung mga flow ng mga ibang canals namin, mga tubig, marami na rin nasisira sa ating kalikasan. Number two is the unregulated use of insecticides and pesticides which will lead to the extinction of flora and fauna and the dwindling biodiversity of our rice terraces. People nowadays, because in the past, we are using organic in every planting we do. But unfortunately, today, we adopt some sort of fertilizing. Ito na yung mga inorganic na pag-fertilize sa aming mga uh, tinatanim, which unfortunately destroys the biodiversity and it kills the flora and fauna sometimes living in our rice terraces. And the use also of our machinery have a very great impact on our biodiversity. Like, for example, in the use of a tractor. Noon, what we are using is human power and the carabaos. Ngayon, tractor na. So, imaginin mo yung makina, gumaganon, ganon, ganon, hinahalong, halong cut yung, what do you call this, uh, uh, palayan namin. Of course, every living creatures in the, on that part ay namamatay. Tulad ng mga, mga eels namin na pinagkukuhanan namin ng mga ulam tulad ng mga gabi na nakatanim doon, is nails na pwede namin kainin. It is killed by these machines. Up to today na nagiging extinct na, in fact, eight years ago, yung yung mga meron, I was uh, taking them. Ngayon, I cannot even find one unless I will go and hike 
two to three hours from our place. So yan po yung epekto ng uh, unregulated use of insecticides, effect pesticides, and other agricultural ma machineries. Isa rin ang nagdi-disturb sa ating uh, what do you call this ecosystem is yung tinatawag nating population growth. Dumadami na rin ang, uh, ang tao sa Ifugao. Kaya people rely on ecology of the source of raw materials. Every time doon na lang nagdidepende ang mga tao sa aming kapaligiran. Everything they want na pwedeng makuha sa nature, they take it because of population growth. And one more thing na nakita ko ng uh, epekto ng population growth sa amin is lahat na ng mga tao doon nagtayo ng bahay, bumili ng mga sasakyan, and then of course, we become an overcrowded place. Asama na dito yung pinakaayaw ko with the regulation of the car companies of giving cars like Candice. You just give them 50,000 50, pesos and you can take cars. This should have been regulated in the first place para hindi ganun na nalang na kinukuha ng mga tao ang mga cars tapos inuuwi sa amin tapos doon na nagkukulang kami ng parking to the point na ang government na namin ang gagawa ng mga parking doon ito in the future magiging problema din namin because of the emission they will be uh, putting into our place. That's why kung pwede rin pakitignan yung mga ganito if we can regulate car purchases particularly na hindi dapat what do you call this magbibigay ka lang ng kahit wala o 20k kukuha ka na ng sasakyan next please and of course water, water shade degradation and unregulated cutting of trees I have said earlier we rely on our uh, on our environment and on our ecology on all the materials needed by our community at yung mga population namin. Can you imagine if we build a building like, I say, for example, like this, we took uh, yung mga woods namin, we cut them, we cut 300 to 500 lugs in order to build. Kasi yun yung parang kinagamit namin pang porma. Pang porma. So, nag... nag uh, Naga uh, iiba na rin yung uh, ano namin sa ecology namin kasi putol kami ng putol ng kahoy. So of course with all the uh, imbalance in our ecology today nagiging marami na kaming problema not really on our rice terraces but on our life as a people of uh, Ifugao because uh, Today, we experience yung tinatawag nating climate change. In our place, when I ask these people, alam nyo ba ang climate change? De, wala silang masabi na ito talaga ang climate change. And they will just tell their stories and we would, un we would understand that as a climate change. Like when we are coming here in Manila, when we enter the bus, we already experience climate change. Kasi we are breathing air na parang hindi sa amin. When I entered this room yesterday, I have colds because I'm not used to that, although it is cold in our place. Ganito ang lamig sa amin, pero hindi ganito ang amoy ng aming, uh, what do you call this, uh, hangin. So, this is how I define climate change. So, in our place, yung mga climate change, maraming inano sa amin, maraming pagba, ba, pagbabago. Tulad ng sinabi ng aming isa, ng culture bearer namin dito, noon is matatansya mo kung kailan uulan. Ang ulan namin sa Ifugao, actually noon is June or July, July, ulan na yan. Ulan na yan. And then of course, pagdating dapat ng November, wala ng ulan kasi yan ang taniman ng tao. Magtatanim sila. And then, March and August, yan yung summer namin. Ang problema ngayon, there is no way to calculate anymore kung kailan talaga magiging maulan. Mas marami ng maulan ngayon. Until now, it is raining in our place in Banawe, which we cannot explain. And it is, what they call this, displacing our farmers. You know why? Because the harvest time is supposedly July, tapos na ang harvest sa aming palay. Dapat ito ay isasampay na at matutuyo at ibabayo at kakainin. 
But sa, dahil sa ulan ng ulan, there is no chance that our people will have it dry. So what happened to our palay? It will always be in a moist uh, condition. Lagi na lang basa. To the point na mamumunga na yung iba which will lead to the low production of our farmers. And of course, our farmers will be dismayed and comes the next harvest, the tendency is, hayaan mo na, I will just go in other places and I will just, what do you call this, work and buy rice. And that will eventually the start of the abandonment of our rice terraces. Yan yung mga epekto ng mga climate change sa amin, pagbabago sa panahon. Isa pa tulad din ang sinabi niya, talagang noon, kahit magbilag ka sa araw, 8 o'clock, lalabas ka, magbilag ka sa araw, maganda. Kasi we were taught that it will give us vitamin. Today, it might give us not a vitamin. Because 8 o'clock pa lang, talagang masakit na masakit na sa katawan. One more thing, as explained by uh, Dalia here, there was a two years in our place na nagiging dry na rin. And they just call it El Nino. With that, yung mga irrigation system namin, yung mga water supply namin cannot anymore supply yung mga palayan namin which will eventually lead to its uh, idle na, nagiging very dry na, nagkrak-krak na yung aming palayan. And at times na biglang umulan, papasok yung mga lupa sa loob, ay yung mga tubig sa loob ng mga bitak and that will eventually lead to the erosion of our rice terraces. And my new ladies and gentlemen, our rice terraces is not lowland, it's in the mountain. Mataas yan. So the tendency is babagsak sa baba, yung nabagsak sa baba, hindi lang yon ang problema kasi pati yung binagsakan. And who are we as humans na hindi naman talaga madaling ibalik yung pagnasira na ang isang rice terraces because it is very costly and you cannot even compensate what you get from this rice terraces. So that's it. Yung mga climate change sa atin. Next please. And we'll... So there is also inadequate income of rice terraces farmers in our place. Unfortunately, the very people who gives tourism to our place is the one who is suffering. Paano? Number one, undeveloped rice terraces product. There is so systematic na ito dapat ang gagawin nyo para ma-preserve ninyo ang inyong mga produkto, ito dapat ang mga we lack the uh, technical knowledge and some other knowledge as to develop our rice terraces products as compared sa mga ibang commercial products na, na binibenta sa marketplace. If you go there, ang kukunin mo na lang, imbis na organic yung iano mo, eh, may butas-butas kasi inano ng uh, mga peste, then of course the people, the tendency is kukunin ko na lang ito kasi mas maganda and, uh, which are not actually organic. So what I mean is there should be a way na while it is organic it should look also nice. Yan yung problema namin kaya undeveloped rice terraces products. Next please. High cost of maintaining the rice, the high cost of uh, maintaining of the rice terraces is attributed to the diminishing practice of the batchang which we called bayanihan. Noon, we live as people. We work as people. In our rice terraces, when we do harvest, we do it as a community. Like, for example, if he has a farm during his harvest or his planting season, I will go and help him. At times also, he needs my help. We do it that way. If we, if we destroy our irrigation because of uh, some calamities, we go as a community and repair it. Unfortunately, that spirit is not living anymore in the Ifugao uh, today. Instead, we hire laborers to maintain our rice terraces, which at times our people would find it too costly. Kasi noon, pag nagtutulungan, walang bayad. Ngayon, wala nang tulungan. We hire laborers to do our work in the rice terraces. Ang nangyayari is, it will give us rice terraces owners additional burdens of paying labor. Tapos ang makukuha mo lang doon sa rice terraces mo na napakaliit is hindi pa kasya sa binigay mo sa mga laborers. So the tendency is with those 
with those uh, uh, causes na nagiging uh, very costly na talaga ang uh, pag uh, ano sa palayan ano ang ginagawa ng aming mga kabataan or, or yung mga ibang tao na able sa mga rice terraces they go to other places looking for greener pasture they come in Baguio work as miners they go to other places <coughs> abroad or here in Manila. Next, please. There is also low production of farmers in, uh, what do you call this, in working in the rice terraces. Number one is yung mga pest. Eh. Ngayon, talagang marami na rin pest ang dumating. I don't know yung mga iba. Unfortunately, ang sinasabi ng mga tao is being introduced by the Department of Agriculture because there are no good study or no wala, walang uh, walang pag-i-study tapos biglang mag introduce ang mga Department of Agriculture like for example they just come to our place ito ang magandang itanim mo tinanim maganda sa una pero at times sinisira na naman yung aming natural na kalikasan o yung dati naming tinatanim or nagiging peste na sa amin like for example what you see on the uh, The presentation is there's a part there na nagiging dry na or nagiging patay na yung palay because of pests. Other which uh, lead to low production is natural calamity. We are prone to calamity. While, our, while, while uh, sa amin, hindi naman kami na flood. Walang problema sa mga evacuation, walang problema. Minsan lang, in rare cases, natatabunan yung mga tao namin. That's, uh, yan yung nga problema, walang baha sa amin. Pero when these calamities hit us, ang hinihit is our source of our livelihood and the source of our income. Na parang nagsabor na kami. And uh, low soil for fertility, inadequate irrigation supply. What is happening today? Yung mga tubig na namin, may host na ngayon. Hinohos na lang at dinedirekta sa kanilang bahay. So iisa na lang o nabibilang na lang ang na parang nakikinabang sa mga tubig namin, hindi tulad noon na talagang irigasyon. Next, please. Next, low farm grade of product, ma, hindi talaga yung products namin binibili ng mura. <coughs> Next, please. <coughs> Next. So, we, so, with those problems, we convert our rice terraces to other uses. Next, please. So, the difficulty in sustaining the volume supply of the value of products from the rice terraces because of degradation from agricultural system and there is no benefit from tourism-related businesses. Alam mo, alam nyo, ang kawawa talaga sa Ifugao, while we are a World Heritage Sites, almost visited every year by many uh, tourists, unfortunately, not a penny is going to our farmers who maintains those rice terraces. Next, please. So, deterioration of the cultural terraces, cultural foundation. Yung mga cultural values namin which have sustained our rice terraces for some centuries is now deteriorating because of the, what do you call this, wala nang gana, yung aming mga kabataan na, namin to continue this because they think that these are not obsolete yung mga cultural values namin that is because of religion or Christianity formal education. As mentioned earlier, the non-observance of customary rituals is also a contributing factor to deterioration of the rice terraces cultural foundation. Next, please. So, inadequate support to rice terraces farmers like, for example, rice planting synchronization ordinance, yung mga pagplant dapat sa Buwan na ito, hindi na nasusunod kahit may mga batas. Next, please. So, that's it. Thank you. Maraming salamat, uh, Ginong William Amanglo. Uh, your Honors, please, may we be requested to... Please proceed. Uh, we may request for questions. Thank you. Um, para po sa inyong lahat, salamat po, Ginong Bukan, uh, kay Dalia at kay Ginong William. Ang tanong ko lang po tungkol sa kahalagahan ng baki. Kasi binanggit po ninyo na mahalaga ito sa nabahagi na inyong kultura at sa pagbibigay ng sagana 
sa inyong uh, pagtatanim at pagsasaka. Pwede niyo kayang maipaliwanag po ng maayos. Kano yung pagtatil ang juga i? Oh, <laughs> nan pitch dan ane a komate na maluklu nan pake an gache dan pikis na yum pya ya mi hakin na pya ki a a ma komodi nan pya hakin na pya te angairin cha na chi chu mon sakri pe su chu angairin am ten na du ni mari a kristiano ya yun cha hi chu na te hine ya na ri kat hine an cha don te Orang pungkas tuan, itu tang memakai hati nak tuan jemit ah, pun ajar tu nari kat yang ini na, membuat jemit ini oh apa yang mangat? Ii buka. Ang pina ang importante ang importansya nangga baki saming mga ifugao is ito noon pag nagbabaki kami, talagang malakas yung baki sa amin, sa aming mga baki sa aming mga palayan. Kasi hindi ito inaatake ng mga peste tulad ng mga daga. At na-maintain yung rice fields namin dahil sa mga baki na ito. Kasi noon talaga sinusunod yung mga alituntunin sa baki. Like for example, yung mga tabu na kung nagbaki ka, dapat hindi mo ito yung mga gawin. E ngayon, pag nagbaki na ang isang uh, mumbaki, kahit sabihin mong tabu na kakain ka ng mga isda o mga ganitong pagkain, ay eh ginagawa pa rin nila. Kaya ngayon, wala nang epekto yung baki. Pwede din po kayo sumagot, uh, Ginong William at si Dalia. Ang pangalaw kong tanong, paano po naapektuhan yung baki po? Uh, binanggit kasi ni Dalia kanina na um, yung matinding init, ay may epekto doon sa pagbabaki. Meron pa bang ibang dahilan na may kaugnayan sa pagbabago ng panahon? Wala pa yan yung utsyong kita ka nung nila kung kaya inin. Ten imarin pa kristyano, yan mo yung utsyong mga si etong nang siya iwalang te narikat yan na kestos te anong atan nang lalakay yung wala te nangina ng manu yun na isa rin po ang problema sa baki na ito ay yung sa problema sa Christian community. Kinokondem nila kasi ang ugali ng baki as a pagan act. So ngayon hindi na ginagawa ang pagbaki dahil sa mga pagpatuloy na pag uh, pagsasabi ng mga Kristiyano na ito ay hindi tama, ito ay isang pagan act. At uh, isa pa ay very costly talaga ang pagbaki. Kasi kung sinabi ng uh, mumbaki na ang kailangan nating i-sacrifice to the gods of the rice and to the gods of life is baboy, eh kailangan maglalabas ka ng baboy. Pero mostly naman is uh, chicken din yung pinapakuha pero pag native chicken din sa amin medyo mahal din kaya ngayon ito yung mga yung mga iba sabi niya sabi nila mahal ang pag uh, pag perform ng isang baki yeah but ginong bukan ay may dadagdag na dagdag oh matinan ah nang ngay rin na yun to yung kin mun puke ya yun ti hakita mi pot ya kita Aduh, yang 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 lain ya, umi nanti takut tak Kristian tu, ya si Chapati yang ini tak cukup menemui ayah tu tu. Like narin sa bumbake, pag na perform sila nang baki, may mga restrictions. Like for example, may mga time, kung let us say pagkatapos ng harvest, ang mga tao dapat should stay in their homes, na walang lul, lalabas or walang pupunta sa fields. Pero ngayon 
with the advent of Christianity sa mga tao, sinasabi nilang, ay hindi na pwede yan kasi Kristiyano kami, they will violate yung mga utos ng mumbake. So parang wala ng epekto yung mga ito. Salamat. Ang last na tanong ko lang kay Ginong William, dahil nasa Ifugao uh, office po kayo, no? Cultural Heritage Office, yung binanggit niyo po kaninang epekto po ng pagbabago ng klima, ito ba ay uh, nadodokumento ho ba sa, ng pamalaan o ng ibang institusyon? Kung may nalalaman po kayong uh, inisyatiba na nagdodokumento ng ganitong mga pagbabago at mga karanasan? I regret to inform you that uh, I have uh, not come to any knowledge na may ganong ginagawa ang probinsya namin or any uh, agencies of the government or non-government agencies sa aming lugar. Ang ginagawa po namin is hindi namin uh, inaano kung uh, yung mga klima, pagbabago sa klima. What we are doing is we inventoried lang yung mga ano pa ang andon sa aming mga palayan. Kung nag -e exist ba yung mga ito na kinakain namin noon at kung meron pa. Maraming salamat po. That will be all, Your Honor. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, the panel will now be fielding questions. Uh, Com, Lea, Momento. Uh, magandang umaga po sa inyo. Uh, magtatanong po ako uh, kay Ginoong Buukan. Uh, ano po sa tingin ninyo, kasi may sinasabi kayo na nagbago ang panahon dahil uh, na umiiksi yung pagsasaka nyo dahil sa sobrang init ng panahon. Gusto ko malaman kung ano ang nangyari sa inyong lugar na masabi ninyo na naging dahilan ng pagbabago ng panahon at kung nagbago ang panahon at apektuhan ang inyong pamumuhay may ginawa ba kayong mga paraan para naman uh, umayos ang buhay ninyo kahit nagbago ang panahon? Uh, ang, tanong, ang tanong ko naman kay Ginang Dalia na Liu, sa loob ng uh, 24 years na ikaw ay nabubuhay, kailan mo naranasan ang pagbabago ng panahon? Paano mo nasabi na nagbago na nga ang panahon? Meron bang nangyari sa inyong lugar na masabi mong naging dahilan? ang pagbabago ng panahon sa inyong lugar. At kay Ginoong Mamanglo, uh, nakita ko sa inyong presentation that the disturbance in your eco ecosystem is caused more by the actions, direct actions of the people and the government rather than by the climate change caused by the emission of gasoline. Thank you. Happy to tell you. Mm. Ah, uh, you see, I keep my mother, I Nilan, Matanta, she and ah, all to meet on the Macuan. We are just in him, not Nani Tawanta, me, Manga, in Polyton or Kodang in Polo, you and Humipot Tayum per Minmonate Nam Potang. <laughs> Ang uh, matansya ko lang is, hindi ko na malayan, maybe around 10 years ago, eh, maganda bang ganda pa rin, pero bigla ko na lang na, na nararam, nararamdaman na nagbago talaga ang init ng panahon sa pagtratrabaho namin sa, sa palayan. Yung ano yung ano yung inakyong yung sinarunungan na yun. Oo, ano yung Ano han ano may potya malam na mata na nerejo ta wajah chenan yung maumbang buta yee ikjong inta mo may pot so sa pagbago ng panahon eh wala kami ng magawa kailangan pa namin trabahuin yung aming palayan so what we did is to make some improvise huts para ishelter namin yung aming mga sarili sa araw tulad ng paggawa ng kawayan Oh, yun na lang daw kasi Sa akin naman po nung naranasan ko po na epekto ng pagbabago ng klima is gaya po nang nabanggit ko nung bata po ako 
naranasan ko po yung El Nino na talagang pumupunta po kami sa kabilang sitio para mag-ibig po ng naiinom na tubig. Tapos yung mga labahin naman po namin, pinupunta po namin siya sa ilog. May kalayuan po yung ilog sa amin pero tinitiis po namin. Tapos sa ngayon po kasi, is yung patuloy na pag-ulan, yun po na, na hindi naman po gaya dati. Kung ngayon po kasi is patu lagi na lang pong umuulan na hindi mo alam, ganun po. Um, my question to uh, Ginong William Mamanglo is that uh, I want you to confirm that the cause of uh, climate change in your place, based on your presentation, is more of the direct action of man, like uh, uh, deforestation, uh, legal logging, uh, rather than and the negligence on the part of the government rather than the climate change caused by the uh, emission of gasoline. Yes, ma'am, I acknowledge that. Thank you. Uh, Com Karen Dumpit, you might have questions to the witnesses. Ang ganda umaga po. Tatanong ko lang po kay Ginoong um, Hangdaan, Yung paglipat ninyo o pag-angkat ninyo o pag-akyat ninyo ng bagong palay, um, bakit ho kayo nag, uh, nagbago ng, bakit nyo ho inintroduce yung bagong palay sa, sa, sa mountains, yung pag-farm ninyo? Um, bakit hindi na ba sapat yung traditional palay na tinawon sa inyo? Oh. <coughs> Hine, oh, hine, and uh, not yet. Well, even the Arikian party, then a query, yeah, you may have, but yeah, on top of the Penata, me, a chak chak out, Pilang, and uh, Waburu and Paki, the Maraksakan Trate, and uh, a pot people, num num num, the Maputnan, Chimbakon and Paki, and we can make a way here. May mayat no wa cha kumakin ng kangat kin pa ki ang tamon ay na puyak ko ni tamban tempo pa do ya kun ko puyak mekit matiko an tumabwa ko nan wit ahlama na hutunan an ko pa do ang paki bigla na lang in introduce sa amin na sabi nila Maganda rin itong variety ng klase ng uh, palay so pwede ninyong itry. So noong trinay nila eh okay yung uh, bunga so tinuituloy-tuloy yung palay na new variety. Pero nung ibalik yung uh, dating palay medyo siya na yung mahina. So tinuloy-tuloy na yung newly introduced na variety. At um, uh, May may dahilan ba yon na konektado sa klima o sa um, bumaba ba yung production talaga nung tinawon kaya kayo nag um, nagangkat ng ibang variety um, bumaba ba yung production nun kaya kayo nag experiment ng iba? Ah, uh, Oh, uh, mapoti siyang he na acar unta yan ang lamot ng pakit uwan niya. Mapuyak yung matunot ng pakit siyang napuyak yung nang lamot na kikam matunot niya. Ilucho mo nang kikam yun na niya kikam mapita yun ang pakit uwan niya. Mahako ang nakapili-pili nun yung mapita. Ayun na. Ayun na. Tamako, you stay and Tinawon. Oh, 
Ang uh, nung inintroduce kasi sa amin ito, I have to make you understand that tinawon literally means once a year. So yung palay namin doon is once a year. Ang sinasabi na ni Mr. Buukan ngayon is, nung inintroduce to, sinabi na rin, you can plant that twice a year. So yun yung ginawa. Pero nung nakita nila na medyo maganda pa rin yung tinawon, yung tinawon rice, nung ibalik na nila, eh, matumal na yung paglaki sa pinagtamnan na ng mga new variety. And Mr. Buukan observed that ang roots o ang stalks ng new varieties ay eh mahirap madike. Eh ang roots ng aming tinawon rice is paglagay mo pa lang doon, nadidikay na. So nagiging fertilizer agad. So yung new variety, mahirap pa uh, Parang bang mahirap madike. So yan yung pagbabago. Kahit uh, dalawang beses nila tinatanim pero sinasabi niya mags maganda pa rin yung tinawong pero nung binalik ayaw na ngang tumubo doon. Dahil sa pagbabago ng lupa. Pagbabago sa texture na ng lupa. <laughs> Maraming salamat. Um, um, yung sa ano lang, yung sa ritual, mabalik ako doon. Um, any one of you can answer that, no? Um, yung sa baki, yung ritual, um, depende sa panahon din yun, eh, no? Um, tapos, ang sinabi ninyo na napaka-costly nun kung um, umiikli rin yung panahon na Um, in between na mag-uumpisa kayong mag-tanim mag, um, kasi ginagawa nyo bago magtanim, correct? Um, so, yung panahon na paiba-iba, yun ang hindi, hindi ninyo masundan o um, you can't cope with it because it's parang it's too masyadong madalas nangyayari kasi ngayon mainit tapos bukas um, Um, ma maulan so hindi nyo nyo alam kung paano ipa-plot yung time na magtatanim kayo um, so hindi nyo rin ma-plot kung kailan kayo mag-re-ritual tama po ba yung intindi ko po dun sa inyong mga testimony Ta tama po yung uh, analysis nyo ma'am yan yung mga iba na mga dahilan kung baka kasi hindi na matrace kung kailan ka talaga gagawin yun so yung iba parang Finofogo minsan yung uh, pagbabaki. But uh, I would like to inform you that ang baki, baki lang yan uh, ng uh, palayan have so many stages. Pag tanim mo pa lang ng palay, may baki na. Pag uh, mag-re-res mag, uh, yung mga tao, may baki na. We call it ulpi o humakop-hop. Magbabaki na kami ng ganon. To thanks the the gods na nakapagtanim kami. And after harvest again, we perform again another baki, we called it umapuy. This is again to give back to the environment what they have given us. Yung mga ganon. So, marami. Kung uh, malapit ka rin mag, uh, mag harvest, there is, there is baki na rin for that. So, it is really very costly. So uh, aside yung sinabi niyo ma'am na pabago-bago na rin yung pagtatanim ng mga tao kasi noon actually is a community affair. So ngayon hindi na sabay-sabay yung mga taong nagtatanim. So noon kasi sabay sila sabay silang nangungupi. Nangungupi so sabay silang nagbabaki. So meaning hindi masyado yung uh, ano na tawagin mo yung community mo para Mag makisalo sa'yo. Kasi noon, talagang silang lahat is doing that. Eh, ngayon, pag nag-perform ka na, baka hindi mo pa matutustusan yung uh, maibibigay mo sa community na pagkain. So, yung iba, uh, parang uh, 
they let it for go na rin kasi hmm, parang sinasabi sa sarili eh, hindi naman nang opis si sinusunod na rin yung iba hindi naman nagbaki si let us so say for example Mr. Buukan or kung late siyang nagtanim uh, eh hindi na niya i-perform yung baki minsan kasi late na rin so hindi na rin nasunod yung agricultural cycle namin Tapos na po. Um, uh, tatanong ko lang, kailan nyo natatandaan na may regular kayo na ritual based on yung panahon nga na napepredict natin kung kailan yung tag-ulan o magtatag-ulan na at kailan yung uh, magtatag-araw na? Kailan yung huling ganun na natatandaan ninyo na regular yung pag-ritual ninyo? Ito yung pista November muna na ta may nila mo. Gusto nga, nga ni ko, ito ay ang, ah, Jinbali pa'y prali, ang piling ng mga opita. May namat siya. At ito. Mga opita nito, namin, tinapah mo namin namin na, ni tanong man yung titihan. At uwan yun, may ohawan ako siya, ito siya na, ang tatanong. Ang matatandaan ko lang na talaga is, dapat November na, nagtanim na yung mga tao para sabay sa kayo kaming magbaki o magbigay ng ritual. At sa February o March, dahil nakasettle na rin at nakatanim na, parang uh, strong na yung palay namin, magbabaki kami ulit to thanks the God. Dapat din sabay-sabay kami. Pero ngayon, dahil hindi, hindi na sinusunod yung November na dapat yan yung planting season, parang wala na. Uh, na hindi ka dahil hindi kami sabay-sabay na mag o mag o magbabaki parang minsan finofogo na namin um, may taon ba kayong natatandaan na November and then Feb yung regular na schedule yung huling taon ano ano yung matandaan ni si Inuwe ah ano ano matandaan ni si Matawon yung pagsante estimate mo Matawon kasi pagkante mga That may mo hi walok hi na eh may tinitian ng twenty na kaya according to Mr. Buokan is ang matatanda niya is more than twenty years ago na yung last na parang communal pa yung bati sa kanila yon yung matatanda niya. Malamig po salamat. Thank you very much, Commissioner Dumpit, Commissioner Pimentel Gana. Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat uh, sa ating mga resource persons. Uh, ang tanong ko lang um, kung sino ang sasagot no sa inyo. Eh, katulad ng sinabi ni Commissioner Karen, naapektuhan talaga ang inyong mga tradisyon at culture no sa dahil sa masasabi niyo ba sa pagbabago ng klima, yung bang ba nakaapekto talaga? Katulad ng sinabi niyo sa pagbabaki ninyo. Uh, ang nakita ko sa rason na binigay ni Ginoong Mamanglo was that na hindi man hindi naman dahil sa uh, klima kung hindi dahil din siguro sa kulang ng ng uh, pera kasi mahal. 'Di ba? Sabi mo maraming beses 'yon tapos mahal, mag-offer ka ng ng baboy o baka o even manok ano. So, naapektuhan ang inyong um uh, inyong culture and tradition. Ngayon, ito ba'y dahil din sa konte ang naaani ninyo kung dapat kung meron ka, dahil sa pagbabago ng klima, nagbago din ang inyong pag-aani or ang kinita ninyo, kaya naman naapektuhan din ang inyong tradisyon. Pwede mo bang sabihin 'yon? nan potkon tu yung ibu nan inin nan tu manam kaya itu kaya eh ano yung petimo ah hindi ya kung nanda nam kaya iya ah eh yey ujum man at uwe ay hindi yung magulin kima nu magulin amat ah okay yun na yun Okay. Kasi sa pagkapumog ng mga kaya duwan, yung mga ano, yung mga kontuo. Ah, okay. Hindi ba yan, inapektara na 
Wala daw alam uh, si Mr. Bukukan na uh, connection sa very low yung production doon na dahil doon ay na uh, ano na rin yung aming uh, uh, ritual practices. Hindi konektado. Sa pagbabago ng inyong pamumuhay or konting pag-ani. Oo, wala. So, ibig, mong, ibig yung sabihin talagang sa inyo na lang kusa yung pag uh, hindi paggawa ng ritual ninyo. Oo, oh, opo. Oh, ah, uh, okay. Ang um, gusto ko lang malaman kasi nabasa ko sa testimonya ni Lolo na ang sabi niya is nung 2000 na daw, 1990s to 2000, nagbago na talaga ang klima at sabi niya napakasakit na sa balat ang init ng 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 ano, ng sun no ang ating uh, ano bang sun? araw. Araw, ng araw. Mm -hmm. Oo. Napakainit daw, iba na ang uh, timplado sa katawan at hindi na ninyo kayang mag, uh, mag-ani ng tuloy-tuloy hanggang alas 5, ano po. Uh, meron bang, kasi sabi din ninyo sa ritual ninyo, usually is a community activity. Lahat, magsama, para mag-ani, gano'n. Di ibig sabihin noon, pamipamilya ang may-ari ng mga plots of land, di ba? O uh, meron bang pagbabago sa dami ng mga nagaani noon sa nagaani ngayon. Ibig sabihin, may pagbabago ba? Mas kumonte ba ang mga farmers ngayon na may-ari ng lupa at ginib up na nila ang land? Ano nangyari dun sa mga uh, plots of land na yon? Ano yun? Ano yun? Ano yun? So, ano yun? Ano yun nangyari? Kumonte na ba ang farmers? Oo. <coughs> Uh, eh, mati ko at uwan niya talaga ni Mitang ti muntamu ng payo te, at uwan niya nun mpon iskol ka ba yung unga ya ayun siya ko na ang umistin ay mong pipitaw o yun nan utyong ko ya at siya ma anak siya yung payo siya te nagsi nagsi tang may pataon siya yun siya nakakaan may siya mong piro kanan lola ni utyong ni isa pong tambuan. So, kami mo yung nakapitin kayo. Isa mo yung nabuan doon. Buwan na buwan doon. Buwan na tawan. Mama, ngayon po, dahil uh, nakapag-aral na karamihan sa mga anak ng uh, mga magsasaka, kumunti na rin ang uh, magsasaka sa amin ngayon. Kasi yung mga nakapag-aral na ngayon, sinasabi nila sa kanilang sarili na bakit pa ako magtrabaho sa mga ganyan eh uh, mahirap magtrabaho diyan. So they prefer to uh, go to other places para maghanap ng uh, uh, trabaho. Uh, so ang nangyayari sa payo na iniwanan nila is talagang nagiging abandoned land na. Uh, isa rin, sabi niya kanina, isa rin sa dahilan kung uh, bakit din uh, hindi tinutuloy yung uh, pagsasaka uh, sa kanilang palayan, eh kung nasira yan, eh mahirap maibalik at kung tataniman lang, tataniman man, eh kukonti ang maaani, eh wala na rin silbi. Okay. So, mai ma ihahantulad mo rin ba itong mga pangyayari na umaalis ang mga kabataan at gusto na nilang mag-aral at magpagbagong uh, direksyon sa kanilang mambuhay eh dahil din ba sa hirap na dinudulot ng panahon. Meaning to say, dahil sa hindi mo rin ma-plot kung kailan ka uh, uh, yung regularity of uh, your harvest or your planting eh, nahihirapan na rin silang ipagpatuloy ang ginagawa ng kanilang magulang. Sa so, tingin nyo ba ganun yun? Yes, ma'am. Because uh, on me, that is a personal experience. When I was 8 years old, I stayed in our place because my uh, both my parents are also farmers. We have, uh, kung sa amin, malaki na yun. Uh, pero pag pumunta ka ng lowland, maliit lang talaga. But sa amin, in Ifugao, pag ganun ng uh, rice field, we have a bus of land which we work on. And I tried uh, 
gumagawa ng pilapil, then everything na nagtatanim. But uh, when the time comes na nararamdaman ko na na parang mahirap kasi napapagod ka na nga, hindi pa sumasang-ayon yung panahon minsan na basta na lang uulan o basta na lang umiinit yung panahon at uh, nagbibigay ng sakit. So doon, parang ako noon, mga second year high school na ako noon, ay eh, na-discourage na ako na mag, uh, mag uh, trabaho sa palayan dahil hindi mo talaga mamalayan kung uulan ba ngayon. For, like for example, papasok ako, magtratrabaho, habang gumagawa ng pilapil, ay eh, biglang uulan. If after one hour, wala na naman, iinit, pabalik ka, uulan na naman, eh kinagabihan, nagkasakit ka. Eh ito, eh, parang na-discourage na ako, umalis na ako doon sa baryo, nakitira na ako sa mga parents ko. Yun. That is a personal experience lang yung na-share ko. Salamat po. Maraming salamat, uh, Chairman Gascon, for questions. Thank you, Commissioner Cadiz, the chair of our inquiry panel. Uh, una, uh, magpapasalamat na ako sa inyo. Uh, ginoong bukan, ginoong mamanglo at binibining naliw sa inyong pagbibigay ng uh, sabi ng buhay, hugis ng inyong uh, ginagawa bilang katutubo sa Ifugao. Mahalaga pa para sa amin yung maunawaan ang kabuuan ng uh, itong pinag-aaralan natin impact ng climate change uh, sa buhay ng iba-ibang tao sa iba-ibang kondisyon. Kaya mahalaga sa akin na uh, tumuwa kayo dito at nagpapasalamat kami na uh, uh, kahit malayo ay andito kayo. Um, sisindog, sisigundangan ko lang yung mga ibang mga uh, pilit namin maunawaan na mga tanong dito. No? Ang particular gusto kong unawain yung gaano kalaki yung uh, alam natin mahalaga na nabanggit nyo na World Heritage Site ang ang inyong rice terraces. Pero gano'ng kalaki yung pagkatali ninyo bilang mga katutubo doon sa uh, pagtatanim at pag-aani sa mga uh, rice terraces. Nabangit nyo, may ilang mga tribo. Uh, kakaiba talaga ang rice terraces. Pero sa kabuan ng Ifugao, gano'ng kalaki po ba ang sakop ng terraces, ilang pong bayan, ang ilang pong tribo, ilang pong tao over time. Meaning to say, 50 years ago, nung kabataan po ni Ginoong Bukan, uh, 30 years later, and so on, gano'ng kalaki po yung sakop na area at yung dependence ng komunidad doon sa sa terraces na yan. Uh, we have 11 municipalities in the province of Ifugao. Nine of these municipalities have rice terraces in which people are dependent upon for livelihood and as a source of uh, uh, food for security. Ng, uh, foods, I mean food security. And four of these municipalities, their rice terraces is inscribed as a World Heritage Site. Two of which are lowlands. So meaning yung mga rice fields nila is lowland talaga. So ka sa kabuan, ang rice terraces namin ay matatagpuan sa siyam na munisipyo ng Ifugao. Kasi ang dalawa is lowland fields na. Sa kasalukuyan po, wala po akong nakikita kung ano ang measurement ng aming rice terraces. 
wala pa po ako ang nabasa kung ang exact measurement ng aming uh, what do you call rice terraces. Ang nabasa ko lang sa monumento ng UNESCO ang sinabi lang doon, the rice terraces of Ifugao, if the walls are placed end to end, they would reach halfway around the earth. And I don't know kung ano ang description noon. So ganun lang dinescribe yung aming rice terraces. So we can say that the province of Ifugao where the, the terraces are unique. There are no other provinces elsewhere in the north that have this. Uh, of the 11 municipalities, two are lowland, but all the highland municipalities have terraces. Mm. And um, could you say that these nine municipalities are significantly dependent over the production of uh, the yield of the of the terraces or is the economy in these nine municipalities uh, diverse how much percent of the tribal communities uh, actually work in the land over time tiyatanong ko kasi yung over time kasi gusto kong unawain kung may impact may direct relation kung dati halimbawa 50% ng mga tao nagtatrabaho sa lupa Pero dahil sa init at di na malinaw na pagdating ng ulan o lakas ng ulan, ay lula nito ay ang paglikas na mention kanina ni uh, Miss uh, Naliu ng kanyang mga magulang na pilitang lumikas uh, para makadagdag sa kanilang kita dahil hindi na naasa ang kita. So yun lang gusto ko unawain eh. Kung dati sapat, ang sabihin natin yaman na naibibigay nito kaya nga po meron po tayong kulturang baki dahil nagpapasalamat po kayo sa ani e ngayon ay nawawala ito dahil nga po sa klima uh, Yes uh, sir talagang uh, may time na talagang ang karamihan sa mga tao ng Ifugao tulad ng uh, Banawi as a personal experience is talagang nagtratrabaho doon sa kanilang mga rice fields ang aking nawitnessan yun na sabay-sabay pa kaming mag-ani lahat ng mga tao doon everyday na lang is parang celebration kasi nag-aani sila at nagbabaki sila so there is a parang there is a continuous community affair hanggang sa matapos ang ani. Like it is part of the way of life. Yeah, it is part of the way of uh, life kasi talagang pinapractice yung mga ganyang uh, kultura. Pero sa panahon ngayon, eh, kumukunting-kunting nawawala yung mga ganyan. So nawawala na rin yung mga enthusiasm ng tao sa pagtratrabaho sa field. Kung tinatanong mo kung ilang porsyento ang uh, parang uh, ayaw ng magtrabaho sa field, eh, wala po kaming uh, naitalang record dyan. Pero uh, sa pagkakaalam po namin, talagang on experience, bumaba talaga ang bilang ng uh, nagtratrabaho sa rice fields. Paano namin napapansin is, Kung planting season na, makikita mo yung mga nagpla-plant. Bibihira na lang. Kung lalapit ka pa, yun yung mga tao. Like for example, nagplant dito, kinabukasan doon, kinabukasan doon. So meaning, like for example, in one community, you can only find 20 people who are doing the thing which is supposedly known a community. Dapat siya, siya ang magtrabaho sa field niya. Ako, ako din. Eh ang nangyayari ngayon is pwede niya akong i-hire as laborer para trabahuin yung field niya. So meaning, nag-extinct uh, yung farmers namin sa Ifugao. How about as a percentage of the local economy? Uh, has the shift moved away from agriculture dependence to tourism or other um uh, livelihood uh yes 
isa rin is because nag-boom yung uh, place namin as a tourism uh, industry, nakapalaka, naka, na, malakas po ang tourism, na, tourism namin doon. Isa sa mga factor na rin kung bakit uh, kumonte yung mga farmers namin. Kasi yung farmers na namin is nag-aral na lang na mag-tour guiding. Eh, nag-guide na lang ng mga turista. And one more thing, yung mga iba ring mga farmers, like for example, sa batad sa kanila, maraming pumupuntang mga bisita, eh nakita niya ang potential ng turismo, sabi niya sa sarili na, magpatayo na lang ako ng bahay ko dito at gagawin kong homestay or lodge. So, okay. kinoconvert na rin yung mga land area na magiging lodge or restaurant. Yan yung, tama po kayo sir, yan ang nangyayari ngayon. There is a shift from agriculture to tourism and commercial related activities. Very rapid yung shift. Karamihan nga ay mga babae na farmers guide na talaga ngayon. They would uh, just prefer to be invited by DOT for a training to be accredited as uh, guides rather than going to the farms. So sila na ang magsasabi na sa turista, oh, ito yung ginagawa ng Ifugao. Pero hindi na nila ginagawa. So, so there is really a uh, rapid uh, deterioration of the numbers of farmers in our place. Yan ang uh, pinaka problema na, na, namin ngayon because we cannot anymore sustain this one. So dumami na po ang mga IBNB, hindi Airbnb. Ipogaw uh, bread and breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> Mas madami talaga. If you go to Banawe alone and in some other heritage sites, kinoconvert nila yung bahay nila as homestays. Mm. So meaning, marami na ring turista, maraming pollution na dinadala. Like when we conducted a clean up uh, activity in one of the uh, in one of the uh, World Heritage sites just last month, nakita namin ang epekto ng turismo. Bulto bultong pl plastic ang naka naka nakatambak doon sa lugar na yan. Eh, there is no way na ilalabas nila because the roads did not reach that one and our garbage truck truck cannot reach that place. So, naiipon-ipon doon until we conducted that uh, outreach program to collect all plastic garbage in that place. E ilang trucks yung nakuha namin. Speaking of that, <coughs> um, uh, tourism and migration, may, na, na plot na po ba ninyo kung uh, the community has also, in a sense, those who were dependent on the agriculture have moved away? You said people have gone to Baguio or even to Manila. And in the meantime, have the the in migration of lowlanders has that also increased or short stay uh, because of the uh, global information now about what the beauty of your place? Uh, I understand there was a multi-million dollar movie that showed your terraces uh, at the end, uh, and did that result in more uh, visits uh, from? Uh, um, tourists that have decided, as they did, for example, in Boracay, you mentioned Boracay, who actually stay and build their own homes and create their own uh, economic activity and not just come in and out. Have you plotted that uh, migration and uh, out migration and in migration? Y yes, uh, sir. In our case, uh, we, la we have a lot of people going sa outside our place because of uh, the hardship of life, especially as to being dependent on our rice terraces. In as much as we also accommodate some of uh, people from other places who, who would want to live with us. And uh, I would cite you on, uh, on uh, a concrete example. There is one from Batangas who I know is a millionaire. And when he visited Banawe, he admires the place. So he buy a house and a lot uh, amounting to around 8M and he regularly visits the place. I know also of a U.S. retiree who came to our place and built a house in the mountains and adopt children as his scholars, bringing them to school. 
because they appreciate the place. I know also of one, 30 or 35 years ago, when he visited Banawi, he married in Banawi, he married in Ifugao, and let his wife, who is from Ifugao, go to abroad, and he stays in Ifugao. <laughs> Those are some cases of uh, we are also adapting uh, other uh, people from uh, different uh, tribes coming to our place. Thank you. Um, I think uh, si Mr. Bukan, mayroon po kayong gusto sabihin? Kami <laughs> Mapokomanan mahin ke siya na tahbuat siya tawon nun nung pangat siya nung pubrito. If our people migrate, the tendency is they go to some other places, they marry, is, they marry and they stay there. The problem is they rarely come back. Yung iba pa, hindi na umuwi. So nagiging abandon na yung rice terraces nila kung meron man sila. Pero I will tell you, nakaramihan sa mga Ifugao, kasi maliit pa yung mga tao do, noon, eh may rice terraces sila. So I would say na majority of uh, ang people noon is may rice terraces talaga. Uh, Mr. Chair, um, I, I just want to ask our councils for the petitioners if it might be possible to provide us with, uh, well, I guess, documentation or because what we've been hearing are anecdotal i heard of this or heard of that but you know if if it might be possible for you after presenting a very important you know uh, uh, issue of the impact of climate change on uh, culture and on um, indigenous practice to see if in fact because uh, many of our the commissioners have um, are wondering is it as a result of climate change or is it as a result of other factors? And we'd like to more be able to better appreciate the link of uh, you know, the increase in temperatures or rainfall on, on the way of life in the area as it has been described. Uh, maybe in the form of some kind of position paper or or evidence to suggest over time that uh, with the rise in temperature and rainfall, the impact uh, on the activities uh, can be directly correlated. Thank you, Your Honours. Thank you, Mr. Chair, Commissioner Cadiz. Um, Your Honours, in quick response to uh, Chairman Gascon's um, suggestion, we will endeavor, Your Honour, to secure these documents, but our preliminary visits there have actually yielded the, the lack of uh, adequate information and research on, on that specific concern. And that's why the uh, when we were asking Mr. William, he's also not knowledgeable. But we will endeavor, uh, Your Honors, to secure as much as we can those important information. And we will make the appropriate manifestations uh, after this hearing. Thank you uh, very much, Chair Gascon and Councils. Uh, Dr. Walpole, would you have some questions for the witnesses? If, if I may, very briefly, I'd uh, like to clarify, as it were, three three steps. So, magandang umaga, kayong lahat, maraming salamat para sa yung presentation koron. Nayon. Um, yung uh, uh, presentation mo, um, William Kanina, uh, so hindi kayo nag-aabot sa nakadating sa dulo. Pero parang may maraming programa na tubag sa yung situation nyo, maraming research, pero kulang. At ito yung, yung problema. So, um, you're looking at the communal irrigation systems and how they're being addressed, the documentation of the rice terraces, flora, fauna, um, and your own uh, 
witness there. So um, what I understand is that partly in this presentation, not presented fully here, is that you're asking for more support for the research and the documentation necessary. Toto yes. Obayan? Yes, Pa. Okay. Now, sir, kwenta nyo, sir, so buhay nyo, maging klaro para sa ako, so paki confirm o hindi, na parang mga 20 years ago, parang the things a threshold, sa impact. Yeah, so around 2000 po, na sabi nyo, parang nagbago, masyadong mainit, iba din yung klema, iba din yung pag-uulan. Yeah, so around the year 2000. Yung El Nino na mentioned kayo was 19, late 1990s or early 2000? Uh, 2000. Mga 2000, okay, because there was one in 1997 and there was one early, yeah, 2000, 2001. Okay, so para ganyan yung yeah, um, shift, yeah, so the timing is helpful. So, um, yung ikatlong tanong ko lang is I'm focusing yung mga apat na dahilan na may low production. Yeah? Sa so presentation nyo, tsaka yung conversion of rice terraces to other uses because this is the biogeophysical uh, climatic shifts. So, may apat na bagay na sinabi mo dyan, yung uh, natural, natural calamity. We know it's brought about by rainfall and the landslides. Uh, the impact, the low soil fertility, inadequate water supply, pests and diseases. Siyempre, kung mas mainit, ibang klaseng pest na uh, kagaya ng uh, nuke kahapon. Yeah, pasok yung ibang pest. Yes. Do, do you understand this being brought about by the reduction of forest cover? or other factors as well. Because do you know how much loss of forest cover there has been in the area? Alam ba yung hindi po yung ilan na. But we can get uh, or secure some uh, information oh. doon sa DNR. Yeah. Because dapat maging klaro kung natuyo yung mga sapa dyan dahil sa pagputol ng kahoy o sa masyadong mainit sa tangahali. Parang ganyan. So, kay, mabuti kung may kunting information. Um, yeah, if that can be compiled along with the story. So, so yan lang po. Uh, according to me, yes, it is true that uh, because of the cutting of trees, there are more, uh, there is less and less water coming from uh, the mountains to supply the uh, rice terraces needs and human needs. And if there are uh, some existing uh, water reservoir in the mountains, the tendency is uh, the owner of that mountain or, or that uh, forest will, uh, will go and buy host, and he hosts it himself to put it in his house. That's uh, also uh, uh, disrupting the irrigation of the rice terraces. And uh, what you are mentioning earlier, sir, on uh, low productivity, on uh, pests and disease, it is true that uh, because uh, our rice terraces in uh, Ifugao 
ang kailangan niyan is lagi talagang may tubig. But unfortunately, because kinukulang kami ng tubig, pag linagyan namin ng tubig tapos nagtanim kami, eh natuyo, pero bumunga na yung rice namin and uh, wala nang makukuhanan ng uh, tubig. The tendency is that will just go there and destroy the uh, palay. Not when it is uh, wet na laging uh, may tubig, hindi naman talaga pupunta doon yung, uh, let us say, for example, yung mga pest. Kasi siyempre, malulunod sila. Maraming salamat. Uh, I have no questions uh, for the witnesses. Uh, Thank you, Your yeah, For the uh, manifestations. Um, you're, you're excused. They may not. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, councils, do you prefer that we have a five-minute uh, break uh, before you present your yes, next witness? All right. Thank you. We'll go on a break.
All rise. The Honorable Inquiry Panel Chairman, Commissioner Roberto Eugenio T. Cadiz, still presiding. Everyone may now be seated. Uh, councils, uh, may we now have your next witness? Your Honors, um, we are calling in our next witness, Dr. Neil Aldrin Maliari. Uh, please swear in the witness. I'm I'm Neil Aldrin Maliari. I'm from uh, Silang Cavite, um, and I'm a Filipino. Your Honors, Dr. Neil Aldrin Maliari is the founding president of Biodiversity Integration Specialist and Chief Scientist at the Center for Conservation Innovations, Incorporated. He obtained his Doctor of Philosophy in Ecology, Conservation and Management at Manchester Metropolitan University, United Kingdom. His 25 years of professional experience in environment and biodiversity conservation, specifically wildlife conservation, habitat restoration, climate change mitigation and adaptation, strategic planning, environmental program design and evaluation, knowledge management and capacity building. He has also more than 20 years of experience in environment policy framework, having co-developed the Philippines Protect Areas Master Plan and contributed to the National Biodiversity Strategy and Action Plan for the Convention of Biological Diversity for the Philippines. Your Honor, um, before we proceed with the testimony of Dr. Neil Maliari, may we be allowed to ask questions for the identification of documents? Please proceed. Good morning, Dr. Maliari. Good morning, Pop. I have here three documents, and I'll be showing these documents to you. Specifically, first document is a statement of Neil Aldrin Maliari, PhD Ecology, dated August 13, 2018, consisting of one page. This was previously marked as Exhibit Quintuple T. The second document, Dr. Maliari, please, is a curriculum vitae consisting of seven pages, previously marked as Exhibit Quintuple U to Quintuple U-6. And finally, the last exhibit, or document rather, is a printed PowerPoint presentation of Neil Maliari on biodiversity and climate change consisting of 17 pages, which was pre-marked as quint Exhibit Quintuple V to Quintuple V-16. Um, Dr. Maliari, could you confirm if you submitted these uh, documents to this Honorable Commission and to this representation? Uh, attorney, I confirmed that I, I did these uh, papers and I submitted this on my own volition. Okay. Uh, on the first document, um, Exhibit Quintuple T, there appears a signature above the name Neil Aldrin Maliari Pieci. Whose signature is this? Yes, this is my signature and I did this signature myself. Do you confirm and affirm the statements you mentioned in these documents? Yes, I confirm them. Thank you, Dr. Thank Maliari. You. For the record, uh, may we ask... Uh, the, the, the clerk of the panel to confirm the markings that were cited. All right, just for the record. Thank, Thank you, you for the confirmation, Attorney Esguera. Um, Dr. Maliari, you can proceed now with your presentation. Oh, no, oh by the way, sorry. Sorry. Sorry, I for, if I, before I forget, we are offering the testimony of um, 
Dr. Maliari to share his expertise on the topic of climate change, vulnerabilities of the Philippine biodiversity. Dr. Maliari, please. Hon Honorable Commissioners, uh, mga higala at mga iksoon, Maya Paldo, kekayungan, Assalamualaikum warah matulahi wa barakatuh. Today I'd like to present some evidence um, from our work and research over the last 20 years um, showing the nexus of uh, biodiversity and climate change. Biodiversity would be the, the lens that I'll use this, this morning. And as you know, biodiversity is the total variety of life on the planet. And I'll use that as a lens for now. Biodiversity for us is the barometer of the health of the ecosystem. Megadiversity countries is a term used to refer to world's top biodiversity rich countries in the world. Biodiversity is no, by no means evenly distributed in our planet. And some countries, especially in the tropics, harbor far greater concentrations of biodiversity than others. Philippines being one of them, and Philippines being one of the tiniest um, of these 17, 18 countries. The Philippines comprise 7,000 islands covering uh, more than 300,000 square kilometers. The country is crucial to, crucial importance, of crucial importance to global biodiversity because of its ex exceptional levels of narrow endemism, both on the terrestrial and marine. In fact, if you, you would look at this uh, table, 61% overall endemism for terrestrial vertebrates, uh, or six out of 10 animals that we see in the Philippines are found here and nowhere else. If you compare that with Spain, which is about, in, in terms of size, um, twice bigger than the Philippines, but you would look at, if you see the endemic species, we have 10 times more than that. And if you compare the Philippines with Brazil, which is about 28 times bigger than the Philippines, we have twice as many endemic species here than in Brazil. That, I hope, puts a, a big exclamation point why the Philippines, as tiny as it is, is very important for that, for biodiversity. Often, I, I always use this in my class just to describe the Philippines as one one seventeenth of the Noah's Ark. If one seventeenth of that is contributed to the, by the Philippines, if you remove the Philippines, one seventeenth of the world's biodiversity will be obliterated. And that is our moral responsibility to the world. Unfortunately, all of these uh, mega diversity countries including the Philippines, are facing severe threats. This um, slide alone, although this is not very, um, not very recent, 2009, shows you the number of species that are at the threshold of extinction. It's quite staggering. Um, and as, we, as you can see here, most of these species are really at the brink of extinction. We have the most number of threatened species per unit area. And if you look at um, the, the sort of habitat that this in, uh, threatened species need, the most important habitat type would be the forest and next would be the wetlands. Looking at the history of uh, deforestation, our country suffers from the problem to li relating to improv impoverished, large and rapidly increasing population, a gross loss of forest cover at lower elevation, especially, and many unsustainable land use practices. This, these factors have resulted in the Philippines supporting by far the largest number of critically endangered and endangered species of birds, for example, um, which is higher or highest, higher than any country in the world. In fact, if you compare the um, the number of uh, critically endangered species, critically endangered species being species that have 50% chance of extinction in the next uh, five years. Philippine eagle is one of them. 
um, we have exactly the same number of threatened species, critical endangered species with India, with India being super large. So species per unit area, Philippines is really, really important. And so the crisis, the biodiversity crisis is staring us in the face. This is the Tamarau. We've recently done the, the analysis and we see that it, its uh, range has contracted by 100%. So we're looking at a very, very tiny spot in Mindoro. And by the way, Tamarau is found only in Mindoro and nowhere else. Um, and if this Tamarau gets extinct, alongside that is the culture of the Mangyan people. Now let me um, talk about climate change for a bit. We know for a fact that uh, the contribute the, that climate change is because of the accumulation of greenhouse gases, and this table here shows us the contributors of greenhouse gases. And here uh, on the right side, you would see the the contribution of greenhouse gas contribution from land uses, and I'll focus on the on the, the land uses at some point, but also allude to um, the ones contributed by industrial uh, sources. And if you look at this pie chart, um, you would you would note that the contribution of deforestation and other land use land use changes are at par with the, with the contribution of elect electricity and heat production, and larger than the industry and transportation. In fact. But together, these this contributors are putting a lot of, um, of our biodiversity in a lot of stress. So where's the nexus then? Biodiversity loss and climate change share a common issue, and this is deforestation. The sad fact is that to us, it's a double whammy for biodiversity. Deforestation by far is the biggest driver of biodiversity loss. And earlier on, we, we know that um, deforestation contributes to the, the greenhouse gases, hence climate change. And the next whammy would be that climate change accelerates biodiversity loss. And I'll, I'll show, and give you evidence for that in a minute. The first evidence I'd like to present to this body is the Tandikan. This is the Palawan peacock pheasant. This is the only peacock pheasant that we have in the country and found only in Palawan. This is a lowland species. It's found in forests in lowland. <clears throat> and if you, if you would notice the graph there, it shows that this species cannot survive outside of the forest. The, 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 the better the quality of the forest, the better it's its population. Our study um, spanned from 2006 to 2018, so quite robust data. And we have noticed a shift also of the rainy season, particularly between 2009 and 2010. Rainy season came in earlier. Normally, rainy season, the onset of rainy season would be towards the end of May. And before that would be peak season for breeding of this uh, magnificent species. And so sh summer has shifted. Um, the months where we um, expect sun or summer, it's raining. We have recorded in, in this span of 10 years that there has been a marked decrease in the population of the Tandikan, which cor corresponds um, to the shift of the rainy season. We suspect that the early onset of the rainy season has disrupted the breeding cycle of this species. In the animal world, behavior is modified by external stimulus and it's passed on through acquired, learned behavior and adaptation. And this is taught via imprinting. But there is a time lag between this adaptive behavior. We fear that the repeated severe weather um, incidences is confusing this species. And we, we might be looking at 
a, a severe drop in its population in the next 10 years. Let me shift to another species, Ascension of Popolo bird still, this is my, um, my expertise. <clears throat> this is a bleeding heart pigeon. This is um, found only in, this is a bleeding heart of Mindoro. This is found only in Mindoro. If you see, the reason why it's called a bleeding heart, it has a red spot on its breast, so bleeding heart, like I am at the moment. <clears throat> We all are, because of the sad state of Philippine environment. Based on our modeling, um, like the Tandikan, this is a lowland species. The, um, the map on your left um, shows you um, the model that we did when we overlaid the Landsat image of 1988 and the 1988 bioclimatic data that we got from World Clim. And it shows that suitable habitats point to lowland forests in Mindoro at the fringes of this island. Uh, yung gitna po ng island is the big massive of um, a big mountain. And so this con confirms that this species is, is a lowland species. But, come, but when we um, overlaid and modeled the 2010 forest cover and the 2010 bioclimatic data, um, we have discovered that there has been a major shift in the distribution with species. So there's a big movement from, from the lowland. It has shifted to high elevation. This is attributed to the severe loss of forests, of lowland forests in Mindoro. But we can see here um, that the species is living in suboptimum level. The species is now classified as critically endangered, 50% chance of extinction in the next five years. To add to more um, evidence to this, when, when we looked at the bioclimatic predictors, uh, in 1988, uh, this species, the environmental predictor for this species is land cover, obviously forest, and annual mean temperature. So obviously this species doesn't want any um, adverse changes in temperature. But by 2010, you would, you would notice that the heaviest model would have, would have been mean diurnal range, meaning um, the average temperature during the day. So it has shifted upwards and it mimics, it looks at uh, places that mimics the condition of the lowland forest. So you're, you're seeing species that are pushed upwards because most of the forests down, down in the lowlands are gone. And to have, and previously I've said that um, temperature is really important for this species. Let's take another example, another bleeding heart, which is found only in, Mindo, in uh, Negros, um, a different species also a threatened species, critically endangered, and found only in lowland forests. It tells us a similar story. Its habitat, its suitable habitat has contracted um, dramatically um, from to 1988 to 2010. Its survival envelope has um, uh, significantly um, contracted or shrunk. It has shrunk. The evidence now sh tells us that in 1988, this species would have been affected, its, its optimum habitat, its optimum living condition, or what we call survival envelope, is determined by isothermality, meaning it likes places where temperature remains, you know, the fluctuation is, is quite um, um, not too drastic. It's ice, it's constant, thank you. But by 2010, because the forest ha has been decimated in, in most of Negros, um, Negros Island, um, this species has moved up to higher elevation. And then its, its um, requirement of isothermality has been shared by, uh, for land cover, um, 
and slope. So, it, so essentially, what, the, what this model is showing is that the species is hanging on to their life because temperature has, has gone up in where they naturally occur. Moving out of the sort of species vortex now, I'd like to show um, a case study on Marikina watershed and on DOI. I'd like to remind us, because we Filipinos uh, have very short, sh short memory, that Ondoy happened, and it's, no, it's not fake news. We tend to forget that all these freak extreme weather events have paralyzed the economy in recent years. The economic cost is staggering. Let me show you some maps um, and some of our analysis looking at the Marikina, Upper Marikina watershed, the protected area, and Kaliwa watershed, which is um, another protected area um, that covers the Upper Marikina um, watershed. This analysis of the satellite data is been between 2001 and 2014. So you would see here that you would, there are lots of um, red areas. These red areas are the recently deforested portions of um, Marikina watershed. There's evidence now that show that the degradation and deforestation is, is directly linked with the increase in population, especially in Marikina, Upper Marikina. To us, the important element is this, um, what we call as um, the tipping point. It's where the increase of population and decrease of forest cover um, meet. Because beyond that, you would see um, an exponential um, effect. But after Rondoy, you would see that um, many organizations, private sector for that matter, have banded together and, and slowed down the decrease in forest cover. Although that has, um, w there's positive effect to that, it's still by and large um, a downhill trend. If you look at the other, the twin protected area, it shows you the same downhill trend. And let me point out that at the point after Ondoy, you would see a spike in population. This is attributed to the fact that a lot of the um, refugees, if you like, the environmental refugees, were relocated in Marikina watershed, hence fueling that um, sort of vicious cycle. Um, and that, to me, is something that reflects on how poorly, poor planning um, exacerbates the condition that we are now in terms of um, environment and climate change. So in our projection, if this is 2014, by 2021, this is how it would look like because of too many people up there in the watershed. Let me go back for a bit. That's 2014 and that's 2021. We, pro we project that um, we will re um, lose around five to 10,000 hectares in the next five years. And that's something that is really, really scary. Another ondoy would trigger another, another catastrophe, I think. But going back to the biodiversity, biodiversity to us is the indicator. Most of the vulnerable species now in Upper Marikina watershed are now absent. This is the Luzon form of this um, bleeding heart. The indicators of the quality of water and the extent of forests are disappearing rapidly as well. This, this is a kingfisher, an endemic one. It's found only where you have really clean, clean rivers. Um, we've only counted very, very few of these in Upper Marikina watershed. The indicators of improving quality and extent of forest are almost gone as well. This is our alarm clock. It uh, calls um, 
at 5 a.m., 12 p.m., uh, 12 noon, and 5 p.m. Oracion namin yan. If this species get extinct, there's no chance for our forest to regenerate naturally because they eat the seeds without the seeds going through their, their uh, digestive systems, they won't germinate. So kahit na mag, mag NGP tayo to death, we cannot recreate a natural forest without these um, natural farmers of forest. So brings us to why this manifestation is biodiversity focus. Climate change exacerbates the dire condition of our biodiversity. And biodiversity being the building blocks of ecosystem. We are already, our already fragile ecosystems are now facing yet another threat, climate change. So it's, to me, we have a, a, a medical doctor here. To me, um, I cannot separate biodiversity, um, biodiversity loss due to deforestation and climate change at this point, because to me, they are sort of a, a syndrome now. You cannot separate one from the other, especially now when we have less than 20% forest cover. The UPLB came out with a um, seminal work that said for the country um, to, to maintain its natural processes, air, air water, um, hydrological cycle needs 45% forest cover. Most of our islands, my friends, are less than 20%. Cebu has less than 1%. Negros, 3%. Mindoro has 5%. And the, the destruction really is, it's real. It's not fake news. In conclusion, climate change action is not about the propaganda. It's not about CSR. Nor it's, it's just planting trees and buying credits. To me, it's creating that safe operating space. For me, for my children, and for people on the planet. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Maliari. Your honors, may, may I be allowed to ask yeah, of course. some questions? Um, thank you for your very good presentation, Dr. Maliari. Earlier, you mentioned about you mentioned about mm. the extinction of Tamarau, and then mm. also relating it to the culture of Mangyan, mm -hmm. which is also now. I'm not. I'm not sure if it's not being practiced or it's affected. So, um, I'd like to understand the link. If there is any between that extinction of time around and then the climate change that you're mentioning and then how it affects with, uh, the culture of Mangyan people. Because also <clears throat> I wanted to understand it because earlier we do have Ifugao witnesses who actually spoke about um, the, their culture, extension, extinction also of their culture. Yeah. Th thank you very much. Um, with our friends from, from Ifugao, I confirmed that a lot of the species that we work on um, shifted um, their survival envelopes um, alongside the shift in the weather patterns. If you are, well, all of us are living things, um, you would always want a, you know, an optimum level of um, environment for you to live. Um, that is what is happening in Ifugao. There's a major shift in climate regime. And in fact, there, in ecology, we, all, we also call them as climate curtains. When you have, you know, do you know when, you, when, when, you, when you're out there and it's raining here and five meters away, um, it's not, it's still sunny. Um, when you are near forest, um, you know, rainforest, rain shadow effect, you have wet areas and dry areas. When you have climate change, all of these climate curtains get dis disrupted and you, where you have um, dry areas, when when it's when it ex, when it is expected to be dry, there's rain and flooding. With the tamarau, this is what is happening. Because this is nor this is um, the tamarau is um, normally a lowland species. It likes grasslands, but because of um, and traditionally this is hunted by our Mangyan brothers for protein. 
but because um, there is much pressure from the UNATs, from us, lowlanders, um, for bush meat, exotic meat, we we pay mangyans to hunt and sell the, the meat um, because it's exotic. And what is happening is that um, the population of this of the Tamarau um, crashes. But alongside that, because it needs grasses, when in in the great uh, I would call the great El Nino in the mid nineties, late nineties, where we were running around the country um, looking at. The, um, Investigating, investigating the impacts of the so many forest fires that we had. That is because we had prolonged um, periods of drought. And therefore, the wettest of the wettest forests, in the, which is the Philippines, has become very dry and very prone to, um, to forest fires. And when that happens, again, the, the species become, you know, they're driven out of their uh, comfort zones and then they migrate and they become outcompeted and so on. But going back to the Tamarau, um, much of their habitats in grassland, because they are now shudad or they're now human habitations, they retreat to upland. And this is the same um, with the Mangyans. Their ancestral land, uh, they're being driven away from their ancestral lands because they don't have um, their titles. And as they're driven up, um, so is the Tamarau being driven up. What we're seeing now, and also this is, we've seen this in Sibuyan Island, there's um, this, um, erosion of the culture of the Mangyan because of the introduction of cash economy. But of course, that's a, that's a side story. We we're seeing a, a shrinking area for traditional uh, upland farming for the Mangyans, and we're seeing a shrinking of the natural um, forage area of the Tamarau. My fear is that at the moment, um, the current count is about 500 individuals. Well and good, but my fear is that what if you have 500 individuals, but because they're concentrated in a small area, and 500 individuals, two males and 498 females, um, there, we are nearing that inbreeding depression. So it's going to that sort of extinction um, threshold one. Second fear is that if we have another Hayan, that crosses Mindoro, gone is our um, is, is our uh, national patrimony because they're concentrated on one small patch in in the uplands of in the hinterlands of Mindoro. One um, one Haiyan type of uh, typhoon where they're goners. So to me, that 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 is a moral. So, an ethical sort of responsibility that the Filipino people um, should be contributing to the world um, um, biodiversity. Thank you, Dr. Malieri. Um, you mentioned about you mentioned earlier about the double whammy effect of uh, deforestation and uh, um, climate change. He in fact stated that. Climate change accelerates biodiversity loss. I'd like to know if we are able to uh, put numbers to it. If we can quantify at what speed or rate is, uh, or what percentage is acceleration, if you know. Well, at the moment, we, we, we do not have um, that analysis. But one thing we know, that quite a number, or in fact, um, let me step back a bit. 90% of all threatened species in the Philippines are forest dependent. Yeah. The problem is the deforestation is happening at a very rapid rate. Um, in fact, you have an average of maybe 1,000 to 2,000 severe cases, 5,000 hectares per year. If that happens, you, you are looking at um, maybe an, inc an increase in maybe half a degree. And our, our global threshold is two degrees. 
And so we're, we're nearing that sort of uh, threshold, I think. So I can't answer in terms of how many species, but um, in terms of proportion, um, majority of the species would, would be the first um, ones to go. And all of them are found, when I say, um, in the slides I said near endemics, they're only found in small islands in the Philippines. The bleeding hearts are, are good examples. Dr. Maliari, uh, you also mentioned in your statement that the unique biodiversity that we have are therefore becoming particularly vulnerable to the deleterious effects of climate change. I'd like to understand how can we really separate uh, effects of climate change from other factors based on your studies and 25 years of professional experience in the environment and conservation? Um, this event or this phenomenon happens in two stages. The first is you destroy the habitat. When the habitat is gone, your house is obliterated, then you're exposed to the elements. The fact is, the Philippines has gone hotter um, in recent years than in recent memory, at least. I think at this point, you know, it should be really raining hard, but, you know, it's, it comes and goes. Course. Um, so, what I'm trying to say is that this impact is th the first stage of habitat deg degradation is happening really fast. And when the, when the when the house is gone, what kicks in are all the biotic the abiotic uh, elements, meaning the non-living elements, meaning uh, they're exposed to the elements: sun, rain, temperature, humidity. And as you know, it, it's the temperature is lower in areas where you have vegetation. It's high. It's hotter in where you don't have vegetation. It's hotter still in urban areas where you have the, you, that albedo effect. So when when the species are exposed, then they become really really vulnerable to sh say um, extreme weather events. And in many cases, um, yesterday we just I just landed uh, I just came back from uh, the two ground zeros, Ormok and um, Takloman, and I was aghast to see how how vegetation the forest has changed in just um, six years. And when I was giving this present similar presentation to our colleagues at the DNR. One of them stood up and said, you're only showing um, deforestation. Can you change the narrative? Because we planted trees. And I said, my friends, I'm, I'm not here to judge. Uh, to judge, I'm just showing um, our analysis based on pictures taken from, from space, from satellite images. And our data is showing that the uh, deforestation rate in, in Leyte is you know, to the tune of 2,000 hectares um, per year in the last 16 years. And you still, you know, question if um, we are more vulnerable to climate change. Yolanda happened, uh, and it's not, not fake news. Or the, 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 the great disaster in Ormoc in 1990s happened because of flash flood. In areas where, the, you know, which used to be forests, Big flash floods, and when we recounted how how many were um, um, the casualties, um, Yolanda had about six thousand, seven thousand. Is that correct? Or Mok had eight thousand, nine thousand. So the cycle of disasters then was about ten, fifteen years. So mukhang okay lang yun. But now it's happening every you know every five years, and then more frequent year on year on year. I'm really passionate about this issue because my safety and the safety of my children is is on the line. And you know, we use only biodiversity as that barometer. At the moment, I feel unsafe because one you know, two weeks ago I was chatting with a friend and we were monitoring the, the rainfall and my friend from UP said we're nearing Ondoy levels. And hence, but you know, we're comfortable with our rooms and we're happy. 
but more the, the more vulnerable sectors of um, the ill effects of climate change are not us it's are the people who are living in in high elevation in forests those are who are driven from their ancestral land and retreat to the forest and these are and also the the, the biodiversity that retreat from lowlands and parang guerrilla to the high elevation i think these are it's a long-winded answer attorney i apologize but really it's it's um, inseparable i think but these two stages to me are are crucial i can't separate them um i mean in, in medical terms it's a syndrome you can't isolate one from from the other and one is an effect of the other if, if you if you see what i mean thank you dr Manel. just last one question um i understand that you've been around the country for more than 25 years studying this uh, environment biodiversity um <clears throat> can you specifically if are there areas, specific areas, other than the Mindoro, Palawan, that you've uh, uh, already um, pointed out earlier? I'm, I'm, I'm more interested as to um, uh, areas where loss of biodiversity could be co correlated to climate change, or even if it's a syndrome, as you mentioned earlier. My fearless prediction, the reason why I showed you the bleeding hearts and the hornbills, they'll be the first to go. Um, despite the rapid degradation of forests in the Philippines, we have not had a single extinction. But I think we're getting there. I think that's the that's the answer. Philippines. All the small islands would go first. Incidentally, they're the most vulnerable to climate change as well, weather patterns and so on. Yung nasa highway ng typhoon, yung nasa highway ng typhoon. From north to Sierra Madre, if we decimate the forest, we will lose the um, we will lose the um, toll gate of typhoon. Do, typhoons, the, the Pacific is the the factory of typhoons. Toll gate would be the Sierra Madres and the Cordilleras. When when typhoons hit the hit the land with forest, its strength is decimated. So this, the typhoon is weakened. And then paghabagat naman, pabalik, you know? Uh, pagamihan pala, sorry. So, what I'm saying is that most of the small islands, um, Negros, Panay, um, compared to Luzon and um, Mindanao, Tawi Tawi, um, and the list goes on. Um, you know, Sibuyan Island, you know, centers of endemism, the first to go. First, would, would um, the people would go because of flooding. The second, um, our barometers, biodiversity will be gone. And go what naman tayo. Sorry. You, Dr. Minya, that, that, that's all for the witness, uh, your honors. Thank you very much, uh, Commissioner Lea Ramento. Uh, with the permission of the chair, uh, Mr. Mr. Maliari, may I ask if, uh, based on your uh, scientific study, what is the major cause of the destruction of the uh, habitat of our indigenous species? It is the climate change or the direct action of uh, the people in the community? Um, it's, it's a direct action. It's a direct persecution on forests and the habitats. Commissioner Gwen Pimentel Gana. Thank you. Um, following up on what uh, Commissioner uh, Armamento was saying, are you saying then that climate change in the Philippines is actually primarily caused by deforestation? Well, it's, it, it, is, um, it is a contributor. In fact, in the, gl the global um, estimate is that um, climate um, deforestation contributes about 24% of the greenhouse gas emissions. Yes, but uh, primarily in the Philippines, would you consider deforestation as the primary cause? No, no. We, we, no. In fact, we are, um, we are a net, we are not, we are not a net emitter, but a carbon sink. We, because we still have forests, we, okay. we sequester carbon. 
Okay, so so what do you think is actually affecting all this uh, change in the weather and what we are experiencing now, especially in terms of the preservation of our species? The thing with climate change is, um, and Mother Nature, it doesn't recognize territories. Okay. Typhoons are um, are produced, as I said, the factory of typhoons is the Pacific. When when the planet becomes really really hot, hot air rises really fast, so typhoons are created. When typhoons move, they move towards the Philippines, and that's a pathway. And so, um, yeah, I mean, the effects of climate change are we bear the brunt, mm -hmm. but the cost of climate change globally is it's not us really. We are, I hate to say this, but we are the victims here, I think. But but you were saying, and you were actually talking of uh, species that are all endemic to our country yeah. and that are really fast uh, yes. becoming extinct. No? And the, one of the, actually, the reason that you gave was uh, the reduction of the forest mm -hmm. cover. Mm -hmm. you know? So that was primarily what you presented. Yes. And what is the cause of the reduction of forest cover? Is it uh, man-made, as uh, Commissioner Leia was saying earlier? Or are there other factors, whether the weather contributed to it? But what primarily <clears throat> is the cause of the reduction of our forest cover? It's anthropogenic, but it's caused ah, by, okay, by humans. Yeah. Okay. So, so uh, what you're saying is that for the Philippines, a lot of uh, majority of our the biggest uh, factor for such a uh, reduction of the forest cover is man-made. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Karen Dumpit. Um, uh, I just have a question um, with a slide about what human activities generate greenhouse gases. So um, <clears throat> if we were to have a percentage of uh, the, last, the last column, which is land use sources, deforestation and burning of forests, conversion of wetlands, rice paddies, livestock production, and fertilizer use, burning of biomass. Um, can, you, can you give us percentages? Um, that's very difficult to, to ascertain now, ma'am, uh, because we've not done the, the nationally determined mm -hmm. targets and, and uh, accounting is, is still, is still um, we are in, in a state of confusion at the moment. Yeah. Sorry. Um, uh, you mentioned that um, the causes of deforestation are anthropogenic. Yes. What, what specific human activities cause deforestation? I just want to <coughs> clarify. Well, well, Dr. Walpole is the best person to, to answer the question, so, sorry, but there, there, are, there are also stages. In the 70s, uh, up to the 70s, it's just booming logging. We are number one, uh, top three exporter of timber, gold, copper, and silver. So we've been pillaging this country for the last number of decades. So, you know, deforestation is mainly cause of that. The other contributing factor when the big logging companies have gone, um, you know, uh, upland farming and because a lot of our katutubs have no place to their their the um, farmlands not um, traditional farmlands have been taken out from them they're taken from them by lowlanders or the educated people uh, they resort to moving up the mountains so it's a it's a vicious cycle really so here din pong pinpoint ma'am and as a result, obviously, of deforestation, we are more vulnerable to climate um, uh, extreme weather conditions. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Chairman Gascon. 
Uh, first of all, Dr. Malari, thank you very much for your the very important information you shared with us on the impact of um, deforestation in particular, but climate change in general to to biodiversity, <clears throat> uh, and for showing us the very beautiful pictures of uh, our uh, different species. Uh, I like the bleeding hearts very much. Me too. Um, I do want to, you know, th this inquiry is about uh, uh, as uh, framed by our petitioners about showing the link between the both the activities but also the failure to inform uh, of the carbon majors, uh, the population about uh the negative impacts on climate change um so you uh, you mentioned that deforestation that is as a result of yeah in a sense localized human activity meaning the ones causing the deforestation here in this country are not the carbon majors but filipinos themselves mm -hmm. um and so on uh, that contributes to climate change i'm i'm trying to understand now because this inquiry is about the link between that activity and impact on human rights hmm. no. um is there any let's say failure on the part of those that have the responsibility to inform governments um, global polluters, etc., to this phenomenon of deforestation. Like, if we had moved, for example, sooner rather than later to renewable forms of energy, uh, would that have halted or at least delayed the the extent of deforestation? Because uh, I'm wondering, you know, maybe part of the deforestation is not just housing. Or, uh, or economy, but also fuel. So I'm wondering, um, uh, could um, activities that should have begun much earlier in terms of mediating the impact of climate change be linked to that failure or, uh, of, uh, or responsibility to inform? I think, Your Honor, if, we, if we've done our job earlier, then we will be less vulnerable than we are now. I think that's that's a sort of a logical answer to that because, I, as I said, there's no boundary to the impacts of climate change that the uh, fossil fuels burned all across the globe result to overall global rise in temperature and the impacts of the global rise in temperature, you know, has has cost, you know our weather system's gone haywire, if you like. So we can't predict where it's going to happen. But the IPCC recently said, you know, in general, those are, who are in the, um, in the equatorial belt mm. would will feel the you know, biggest brunt of uh, the payback, if you like, of climate change. And so, I, again, I can't isolate. What, what I can say is that if we if we have done our jobs earlier on, um, we are we will be less uh, vulnerable. Case in point, um, the reason why th this uh, forget the name of the super typhoon that was um, poised to uh, ravage the Philippines about three years ago, um, when it hit the Philippines, it weakened. Um, you know. Um, you know, what did they say? In, in Yolanda, people were saying that the areas where there was mangrove, um, devastation was less. So, you know, th there are evidence out there that, that show that uh, a more intact ecosystem reduces our vulnerabilities. I think this, is a, this, this, this discourse is all about not, you know, are we... Are we vulnerable? The answer is yes. What is our measure? To me, the, the, the indicator, the barometer is biodiversity, the, 
because we have lots of species that are at the brink of extinction. It means that their habitats, their ecosystems where which they represent are in in dire straits, if you like. So if that is the case, so um, if we if we stop the massive deforestation in the 70s, and if we prevented the parity rights on Before access to forests, then we would have had maybe, I hope, uh, more than half of the forest that we had. But, you know, Negros was uh, deforested in, you know, almost completely in shortly after the Spaniards came. And, you know, forests were converted to sugar. Uh, sugar. Yeah. Um, Cebu, the same. But their vulnerability increased dramatically. Uh, water is very scarce. Cebu um, is, is one clear example. Mindoro, we just came back uh, a week, two weeks ago uh, or three weeks ago, I think that was. Uh, and places where we were you know, doing the surveys um, almost a decade ago, um, we we almost did not we, we we almost did not make it back to Manila because um, most of Sablayan was flooded, mm. and so how do you put um, a value to it? How do you how do you pinpoint um, the impact? Um, it's 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 really difficult. The only um, uh, evidence that we have now um, are ones that we can monitor uh, or we have monitored over um, quite a sizable time scale, 10, 20 years. Mm -hmm. But but we, we as a people and government, we're all, all, always slow to react. Nangyari na bago tayo mag-react. On Doi Hap, you know, um, we were we were doomsayers um, 10 years be before on Doi, shortly after the Ormok tragedy. And they were saying, oh, doomsayers. And on Doi happened. Changed the, the, uh, the behavior of, of us. But it was short term. After three years, okay, na, naka, naka recover na. Um, back to normal, business as usual. And then Frank happened, and then Millennia happened, and then um, um, Yolanda, and so on and so forth. We, we, we are like Dory um, in um, <laughs> Finding Nemo. We forget the moment we go into our houses and go about, you know, and especially in this, in this day and age where, you know, living is such highly um, driven by politics that we forget how vulnerable we are as a, as a people. Thank you. Um, you showed some slides that I found very interesting. You showed the slide, the graph of um, pre-Andoy and post-Andoy mm -hmm. human activity. Uh, and uh, we, you showed very clearly that the downward trend while it continued was in a sense abated. I, at one point it was sort of like plateaued. Mm -hmm. you know? uh, so even though there's an increase in the population, people have become much more aware about the need to protect the forest. Yeah. Um, I, I would I assume that we've, you know, we passed the threshold a long time ago. Uh, you said our cover now is less than 20%. Um, but if there is a concerted effort uh, uh, trying to mitigate and to to, uh, you talked about uh, your friends from DNR saying, how, how come you're focusing on the deforestation but not on the, uh, the granting of trees? Uh, what kind of an effort will be necessary uh, for us to sort of like turn the tide, if, if that is at all still possible? Um, and is there, is there a link between that kind of an effort of you know, protecting our forests and the biodiversity that would hopefully be uh, in, enriched or restored by the restoration of the forest on one hand, and 
let's say, more environmentally friendly human activity moving from fossil fuels to, to uh, let's say, other, let's say, more renewable forms of energy uh, moving from oil to wind and, and sun, for example. Is, is there a link between that or are those two separate uh, mediation uh, I'd like airports? to answer that um, by saying this. In our experience with up, Upper Marikina Watershed, with the concerted efforts of, of private sector, NGOs, etc., has slowed down the rate of decline. Yeah? But when we did the biodiversity scan and assessment, biodiversity did not spring back. Because, as I said, in nature, there, there's a time lag between, you know, springing back to homeostasis or the natural state to, you know, uh, hanging on to your life sort of stage. What would be the way forward? The way forward is that as a, as, a, as a country, as a nation, we need to stop the bleeding now. With the less than 18% forest cover, or less than 20% forest cover, let's stop further degradation. As we increase the, the forest size, but of course, planting uh, and expecting that in five years we create a forest, that's ridiculous. We need ecological times, uh, maybe one lifetime to have forest re recreated. And so, you know, we are in that sort of situation where, you know, I think the song goes like, uh, we found love in a hopeless place. Um, it's a dance song. Yes. Um, my gener that's my jam, my, my generation. Anyways, but, but really, it's, the problem is we're in, that, in this situation now. The third sort of strategy, I think, is to increase our resilience. Increasing resilience is not just about creating more, you know, cementing rivers. It's more about fortifying rivers and, you know, not planting and not, you know, cementing riffraff or something like that. It's not about planting um, the pluricarp species first off. It is assisted natural regeneration. Look at what, what um, you know, Upper Marikina watershed. Um, Several months, a uh, few months after Ondoy, busloads upon busloads of uh, of uh, staff of Jollibee, um, Smart, PLDT, etc., went up there and planted trees. Thousands upon thousands of plant uh, trees planted. Um, a, a few months after, we we monitored eighty percent of them gone. Natuno latuno. So. Because there's a mismatch between species and um, land, and you know, so, sorry to use this uh, analogy. The Philippines is is sort of a person which is uh, who is suffering from diabetes, yeah, and then um, it's it's um, it's losing hair, and sorry, and but. That person is quite vain. I want a, a, a hair transplanted. You can't transplant hair until you uh, cure or address your diabetes because th the wound won't heal. So let the land heal first before you plant. This is what happened in Marikina watershed. Because of the flooding, uh, runoff, organic material has been washed off. So kaitiko yung seeds, you you would die because it's too hot. Uh, water is not retained. And most of the Philippines, um, there's no absorptive capacity of the soil. So it's it's a vicious cycle. It's it's a syndrome. Uh hirap tangalin bawat isang thread. It's interconnected. Yeah, it is. Thank you, Dr. Malia. Thank you. Dr. Walpole, no, no questions. I have no further questions. 
uh, what is now the pleasure of the councils. Do you want to proceed to lunch already or do you want to present your next next week? <laughs> Let's have lunch. Uh, your All honor right. see you so, right. So we will have an hour break for lunch.